today where I'm located. to be wary in planting good seeds for the season of reaping the wonderful harvest you've planted is coming take advantage of every opportunity to be a blessing to others especially to our brothers and sisters in the family of faith Galatians 6 9 
give him glory. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just give him glory right now. Focus on the Lord. that breaks the chains of bondage off of people's lives here today in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give him glory. I love this song. I can just feel the anointing coming down. The glory cloud. Lord, just grace us with your presence today as we cry out. Your word says that the angels of the Lord encamp around them that fear him. Lord, we walk in the fear of the Lord today. We thank you for showing up on this live. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. It's so windy outside my window today. I just see wind blowing stuff everywhere. I can't help but look outside. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Fresh wind in our sails in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This song is The Love of God by Jackie and Stacy Baker. Thank you, Lord, for touching people today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing flowing through the screen, flowing through the airwaves. I release anointing in Jesus' name. Just receive the shalom peace of Jesus Christ in your life. The wind, the wind of God, the fire, receive the fire of God to burn away witchcraft and demons in Jesus' name. <sighs> Hallelujah. Give glory to the King. Give glory to the King in Jesus' name. Give glory to the King in Jesus' name. Uh, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give him glory. Give him glory. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll do another song here in a minute, I think. I'm going to reflect on some thoughts here for a moment. Yes, it is windy in Florida today. In Georgia, someone said in Georgia. Man, so I just wrote an article and I titled it The Perpetual Victim. This is going to be good. I'll share this with you guys. I put it on Facebook um, and I also shared it on Warrior Notes app, which it's, I know not a, not a lot of people are on Warrior Notes app. Um, you have to be a student uh, at Warrior Notes Bible College to be on that app. So there's only like five or 7,000 people on there. Um, some people don't want to be fixed because being broken gets them attention. I've come to realize this. This is, this is a word. Pray about this if you receive this word or not. I've learned this in ministry that you can try to help people, but not all people want to be helped. Some people would rather stay in bondage because they can use that bondage as a crutch to receive attention from other people. This is a good word. Someone's going to get set free today from this. Some people choose to keep their demons by walking in the flesh. This is what demons want. Arguing, uncontrolled addictions, lustful thoughts, pornography, sexual morality, manipulation, which is actually witchcraft. Hatred, senseless arguments, resentment towards others, especially when other people are favored. Um, it could even be coveting the anointing on other people's lives if you if you are in the Christian circles and you and you know. Um, I'm just thinking of examples here, and this is I'm I'm I'm, I'm extrapolating all this sermon off of this article I wrote about an hour ago. Some people are who are very demonized tend to behave like a drowning victim. So I just want you to picture this for a moment. Picture a drowning victim. What happens? I don't know if any of you guys have ever taken lifeguard classes, CPR, or you've learned, God bless you, Pastor. Uh, God bless you, man of God. Pastor Elder Morris, I honor you. Thank you for coming today. Um, if, if, if you try to reach out and, and save a drowning victim and they're out at sea and they've just been splashing in the water, splashing in the water, and you come along with a raft or a flotation device and you say, here, I'm here to help. Sometimes the drowning victim will grab you and pull you into the water. Do you, see, do you, do you follow me? I hope this makes sense because this message is going to set someone free today. I can feel the anointing on this, on this message. This is from the Lord. I'm telling you, this is good. Some people will pull you down into the mud where they're at and beat you with the experience. I'm talking about people that make chronic bad decisions. Now, this is not going to be the easiest message for everybody to hear today. And it's not for everyone. This is not directed at a particular person or individual that's here. So don't think I'm, I'm picking on you. I'm not. I'm not picking on any one person. Just ask the Lord if this message pricks your heart. Is it for you? And how to receive this message in love and in grace. I try to season every message with the foundation being love and then grace. Grace being that... If you hear a word spoken by me today and you're like, wow, that touched my heart, just know that there's no condemnation in Christ. This is not a condemning message. This is a message of love. So if you're trying to reach out and do ministry and help people who are extremely traumatized, extremely demonized, there are times where I, as a deliverance person, just as a person that the Lord is using, glory to God, as a person that the Lord is using in ministry, there's been times I've reached out to try to help heal someone and help set them free from bondage, from addiction, from, from terminal things that they just can't seem to get help from. And then I realized something. As soon as I came in, I was attacked. Some people have had demons for so long that those demons are influencing their personality and they think that the characteristics of the demons are them. That's a good word. There are people out there that have had demons 40, 50 years. Now they're in their 60s or in their 70s. 
And now they've had these spirits in them manipulating people, slandering others. And they think that, oh, that's just who I am. My dad was that way. My mom was that way. My grandma was that way. When in reality, you have a generational spirit. It's actually, some people call this, so if you've never heard anyone talk about generational curses, right? Generational curses. What is a generational curse? I know people are like, what is a curse? What is a generational curse? I don't want to live under a curse. Amen. Nobody wants to be under a generational curse. Let me tell you what a generational curse really is. It's a generational demon. It's a spirit. It's a familiar spirit. And the root word of familiar is family. La familia. Family. The Latin is familiar. Family. It's a bloodline spirit that's been passed down through generational what? Sin. Generational what? Sin. Not trying to be funny. I'm just trying to like, sometimes I try to say things a certain way because I know I have to break through the layers. Or if, if there's anyone here that has scales and I'm going kind of fast, sometimes I repeat myself to make a point because I, I have to emphasize certain things from what I've learned in ministry. And it's this, that there are times where you can tell someone the truth and it, and it, and it seems to like skim over them. And what I've learned is, is sometimes I've had to learn how to be a good teacher. So sometimes I'll say a message one way and someone doesn't get it. And honestly, I believe a good teacher does do, does a couple of things, leads by examples and is good at parables. Jesus was good at parables. I've learned to break down and extrapolate information and try to put it into several different practical types of forms. So perhaps there will be some days I'll have a message one way. And then I'll actually repackage the sermon and present it a different way. And then different types of people will receive it because it, it relates to them now. So this is a message I titled The Perpetual Victim. That's the name of my sermon. It was perpe The Perpetual Victim. This is talking to people that always see themselves as the victim. They're always complaining. They're always confused. And they think that it's it's other people. Now, yes, you might get rejected by others. You may have a certain degree of rejection and people may actually work against you. No. So this this message is double sided. This message is double sided. There's there's two sides to this. But there are people out there that need help, that are hearing voices, that are hearing tormenting thoughts that really do struggle with demons. They struggle with generational curses. Sometimes these people are bedridden. They're sick for years and years and years, and they don't know why. This message could set somebody free. If you've been bedridden, terminally ill, you've been having chronic sickness in your body, fatigue, you have no idea why. You can actually repent on behalf of your loved ones, of your ancestors, by renouncing the curse. If you experience the things I'm talking about, you need to start praying. Body fatigue, you have no idea why. You can actually repent on behalf of your loved ones, of your ancestors, by renouncing the curse. If you experience the things I'm talking about, you need to start praying for your family. Start praying for yourself by breaking these curses. You need to say, I renounce witchcraft on my family line in Jesus' name. I break the curses of all sin of my ancestors on my mother and my father's side in Jesus' name. Now, a lot of times this is, this is going to be a message that's not going to fly over really well right here. But some people are reaping what they've sowed. So if people sow discord, if people sow division everywhere they go, if people are just sowing bad seeds of corruption, there is, it is biblical to reap what you sow. So again, if you're in a bad season of life, you and you alone can change that. You have the power. Did you hear me? You have the power to change your own life. A lot of people feel like they're waiting for someone to come along and rescue them, when in reality, the only person that can, say, that can rescue you from your situation is you. So this is a good example I want to provide. I, I've, I've gone to do ministry before, and I've seen someone that was crying out for help. They have demons. They have altars. They have familiar spirits um, for many, many years. And what I realized was is I tried to help someone that didn't want to be helped. And they actually attacked me for trying to do deliverance ministry with that person. So... Again, when a mistake becomes an excuse to keep repeating the mistake, you can take that as a red flag or a sign that you got to reflect on your own actions. If you have demons that won't leave, no matter how many people try to help you, now this is the message I want you to get. If you, if you need deliverance and you run to people left, right, middle, you're going from ministry to ministry to ministry to ministry to get set free from demons and nobody can get you set free, then you got to look in the mirror. You have to take accountability.
Accountability is when you hold, when you take hold of your own life and stop projecting your problems and blame onto others. If you see yourself as a chronic victim, you'll always go about life expecting other people to change your life. When in reality, you and only you hold that power. No one is keeping you in bondage but yourself. So that message is for somebody. So I have had people come to me that say nobody can cast out these demons. And I have, and I have had people come to me that say I have many demons. No one can cast them out of me. And then guess what? If, when people come to me and they say, hey, you know, I know you're anointed and you cast out demons. I need you to cast out my demons. I'm like, hey, I, I can't do it either. They're like, what? Yeah, you know, you make the decision to keep your own demons. Why? Now, that's, that's, what am I not being accountable for? People are walking in the flesh. If you walk in the spirit, you're not living in the sin. Uh, when you get saved, you're a sinner. That, and yeah, you're saved by grace, but you don't stay in sin. You're not supposed to. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18 says, Children of God do not make a practice of sin. For the Son of God holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. Let me put on some music one second. So no, you're not, you're not living in sin as a Christian. That's not how a Christian is supposed to live. Christians are not supposed to live in willful sin, repetitive sin. Making excuses to keep repeating the same mistake over and over is not right. We're not supposed to do that. As a matter of fact, I'm about to share some scripture with you out of 1 John chapter 3. And we're going to really go over what we're going to talk about that for a minute. Let's talk about it. There's no condemnation on this. 1 John chapter 3, look at that. I already had it pulled up. 1 John chapter 3, verse 6. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin. But anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. Who am I talking about? Jesus. If we abide in Christ and Christ abides in us. In other words, all we are is branches connected to the vine. The vine is Jesus. Jesus Christ. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin. This is in your Bible. This is 1 John 3 verse 6. Anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. Dear children, verse 7, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. Now I'm going to pause right there. What, I'm, what this message is saying is who are you behind closed doors? Can you be trusted? Are you able to be trusted? Can God trust you with a ministry? Can God trust you to move forward? Can God trust you to develop your character when no one is looking? Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. What I'm saying to you is, are you the same person on TikTok, on Facebook, on out in the street? Are you the same person that you portray yourself as on media? This is, I'm pre, I mean, I have to preach to myself. I have to hold myself accountable or else I would be a hypocrite. And Jesus was, was very, very, uh, Jesus was very stern with hypocrites in the Bible. He addressed the Pharisees for the hypocrites that they were. He told them that they were of their father, the devil. And that was the religious leaders of his day, the Pharisees. And they plotted to kill Jesus. The Jewish leaders of Jesus's day plotted to kill Jesus. Yes. They were evil in their hearts, yet outside, on the outside, they tried to make themselves look good. They were narcissists. You want to know the truth about Pharisees? They were narcissists. That's what the world, most, most worldly people, clinical psychologists, they would, they would label what Jesus is dealing with as narcissistic abuse in the Bible. I'm, I'm, just, I'm trying to break this down to the most practical teaching I can. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. When people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil who has been sinning since the beginning. But the son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. So now we can tell who are children of God. This is in your Bible, folks. This is 1 John 3 verse 10. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. So let me give you a great example of love. Love keeps no record of, of wrongdoings. Love is quick to forgive. Love provides hope. Love is the foundation and pillar of our faith. God is love and, and perfect love casts out all fear. Now, a lot of people want their ears tickled though and they want to be 
told something that's not really true. Like, oh, it's okay to stay living in willful sin as much as you want. And I'm, I'm the guy that's like, look, look, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. If you're, if you're on a crash course headed for the wall, I'm the guy with the wet red flag in my hand. Hey, Stephanie, God bless you, sister. I'm the guy with the red flag going, slow down, slow down, hot shot, slow down, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. You, you know, God uses people to warn others that are, that are possibly not hearing from God. They're not in intimacy with God right now. You can, pr- if you're a born again Christian and you haven't heard from God in a long time, you don't get dreams, you haven't had intimacy, alone time, prayer closet time, you don't have a prayer life, God can use people that do to reach out to you. <clears throat> Here's the good news. Jesus wants intimacy Jesus wants intimacy with you. He wants alone time with you. He wants you to pray in tongues, pray in the spirit. The apostle Paul said, I pray in tongues more than all of you. When you pray in tongues, you can get alone with the Lord and he will, you can minister to him and he will minister back to you. The Lord will minister back to you. Your ministry and your life, I'm talking to you as a person, you're a, as a Christian, you're a walking ministry. Your ministry in life is nothing but overflow. It's just strictly overflow. It's overflow of your intimacy with the Lord. That's it. That's it. That's it. 1 John 3, verse 10. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are the children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to to God. So Jesus wants intimacy, not religion. This is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Verse 12, we must not, we must not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one, the devil and killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil and his brother had been doing what was righteous. Now I'm about to cross-reference this with another scripture that'll really, really help you. John chapter 3, verse uh, 20. Because I I have a feeling at this point, you're, you're starting to wonder, why do some people not receive my message? Why do some people not receive my message? I'm gonna tell you why. John chapter 3, verse 20. For every wrongdoer hates... I'm, let me break this down into uh, that's amp. Let me let me pull up an NLT. There we are, John three. Sorry, I'm on my computer. I have mo- I have a, a my one Bible here, and I have another on the computer. All, uh, all right, this is John chapter three, verse twenty. All who do evil hate the light. That's your answer right there. That is a, that is an answer for so many people right there. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear that their sins will be exposed. There are people in your life that won't get near you because the light of Christ is shining through you and they're fearful that the light of God, the light of Christ shining through you will expose them for the sins that they're enjoying. To love the truth is to hate evil. So that was John, John chapter three, verse 20 is, is where I'm, where I'm quoting all who do evil, hate the light. Who is the light? You, you're called to be the light of Christ. Now there are, are other questions I'm sure some people have. Um, I made a video the other day called are, are some people more anointed than others? I posed the video as a question and I based it, based it off of, um, Hebrews chapter one, um, verse nine. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9 for you have cherished right this is a good so I'm going to I'm going to pose a question to, to everybody here are some people more anointed than others Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9 for you have cherished righteousness and detested lawlessness for this reason God 
Your God has anointed you. Let me repeat that. For this reason, God, your God has anointed you. Why did he anoint you? Because you have cherished righteousness and detested lawlessness. When you hate sin and you hate evil and love justice, you love what God loves and hate what God hates. Then you become anointed. You can walk into the light of Christ. You can put on the full armor of God because you have refused to compromise with the devil. Give the accuser of the brethren no place in your life. Don't give the enemy a foothold in your life. Grace gives you the ability to overcome sin in your life. That is a good message. Fire on that message in Jesus' name. Grace gives you the ability to overcome sin in your life. Hallelujah. For this reason, God, your God has anointed you. He anoints those that he can trust. He anoints those that hate evil and love justice and love justice. Your throne, this is Hebrews chapter one, verse eight. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever, and you will rule your kingdom with justice and righteousness. I, I'm telling you, I, can, I feel the anointing right now. The, the, it's like the pillars of his throne are, are, are justice and righteousness. So when you hate sin, God will anoint you that when you love justice. To truly... To love the truth is to hate evil, is to have no part in it. So if you're choosing to hold hands with the devil and try to walk in the light, you can't really do that. I'm talking about being lukewarm. How can two walk together except they be in agreement? Uh, let me rephrase it in another, que in another question, if you will, or parable. What does light have in common with darkness? I'll break it down another way. Jesus sat with the sinners and the lost, but he did not become like them. A lot of my message lately is talking about um, be careful who you allow in your inner circle because people who are unhealed, people who have a lot of demons will tend to lash out at you. And, and Listen, not everybody can fly with you. I'm preaching to myself. Not everybody can fly with you in ministry and life. I've learned that it's entirely necessary to keep a healthy boundary with certain people. Um, I've even learned that when you start setting boundaries, you're actually teaching people how they can treat you. If you allow people to over talk you, mistreat you, talk down on you, step all over you, walk all over you, you're teaching them that it's okay to abuse you. You're teaching people that it's that it's okay to abuse you if you allow them to mistreat you. Fire of God, hallelujah. Such a good song in the background. <laughs> yeah, your circle becomes minute, amen. So what will happen, it, this is what happened to me the people that I used to be friends with, if, you know, some of them, I don't know what was going on in their personal lives, but I was pulled aside. I was pulled aside to be consecrated for such a time as this. And what I actually came to realize is a lot of the people I used to be friends with were working against me behind my back. They were slandering me. They were gossiping about me. They were striving and arguing and working against one another. And they were very jealous types of people where they would see, oh, wow, like, you know, you're anointed or wow, you know, you have a calling on your life. So now they almost feel threatened by that. And now it's like they're trying to tear you down all the time. So I've just learned you have to get away. You have to get away from the wrong people in your life. Bad company corrupts good character. First Corinthians 15 verse 33 says that. 
Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1. Can't you hear the voice of wisdom from the top of the mountains of influence? She speaks into the gateways of the glorious city. At the place where pathways merge at the entrance of every portal, there she stands ready to impart understanding. I, I have prayed for the spirit of wisdom to come upon me. And here we are in Proverbs 8, verse 4. Shouting aloud to all who enter, preaching her sermon to those who will listen, I'm calling to you, sons of Adam. Yes, and to you, daughters, as well. Listen to me, and you will be prudent and wise, for even the foolish and feeble can receive an understanding heart that will change their inner being. That will change their inner being. The meaning of my words will release within you revelation for you to reign in life. Did you hear me? You can reign in this life. You can dominate. You can reign. You can walk and crush serpents and scorpions beneath their feet when you walk in the spirit because the spirit of wisdom will be upon you. God can trust you when your character is fully developed. I'm talking about integrity as well. For everything I say is unquestionably true, and I refuse to endure the lies of lawlessness. Now, lawlessness is, is, as you could say, and all right, so it's sin, it's the flesh. And the New Testament, we're not under the law of Moses. That's what Galatians 5.18 says. It's because you're in the spirit now, you're born again. And when you walk in the spirit, you're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh, which is to sin. To be carnally minded is to be an enemy of God. So if someone is stuck in the flesh and all they do is fulfill the lust of the flesh, they're actually an an enemy of God. They're working against God. Now they don't know it necessarily. And there's grace for people that do this, I believe. This is, I'm talking about people that are like stuck in the flesh. All they can do is slander, argue, cause division, sow discord, do drug, whatever it is. That is all the works of the flesh. I'm basically quoting Galatians 5.19 and different types of breakdowns is what I'm saying right now. Um, All right, so back into Proverbs 8, verse 8. All the declarations of my mouth can be trusted. They contain no twisted logic or perversion of the truth. All of my words are clear and straightforward to everyone who possesses spiritual understanding. Now, this is, this is Proverbs 8, verse 9. You're going to see a similar verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, where it says that not all people are spiritual. Some people are carnal and have no spiritual understanding whatsoever. Only a spiritual person can discern all things. All right. Proverbs 8. If you have, this is verse nine, if you have an open mind, you will receive revelation knowledge. This is the passion translation. It really breaks things down. It extrapolates through the power of compassionate words. Okay, I love the passion translation. It breaks things down. I love to break things down. I love to define words. You guys will probably laugh at me if I told you this, but there's a lot of days I'm on Merriam-Webster's dictionary trying to look up the definitions of words so I can have more understanding, so I can understand how to apply a specific word given to a situation. Just basically, I want to learn how to be a better teacher so I can always break things down. That's the definition. Did you know that's basically that's what extrapolation is? Extrapolation is when you can take an obscure construct, uh, when you can take something big and break it down into bite-sized pieces. But you're still getting people to the big piece of data that they need, but you're giving it to them in nuggets. Because it's, it's easier to digest small bits of information throughout a, a, a given instance or period of time. I find it's easier to teach that way. And I, and I personally believe I learn better that way as well. A lot of people learn differently. Some people are just brilliant and they can just read like way deep stuff and boom, they have it. Other times it's like we need to hear it in different ways. Um, so don't feel bad if, if, you, if you learn differently than others. Some people are more logical minded than others. Some people have a very high sense of reasoning ability. They have a very high emotional quotients of intelligence. Some people are just very smart. Some people are very like way above the rest when it comes to learning and knowledge and things like that. 
You do have to be careful with knowledge. I've learned this. The Bible does say that uh, knowledge can puff up pride. It's good to have a humble heart. This is Proverbs 8, verse 10, the Passion Translation. My wise correction is more valuable than silver or gold. The finest gold is nothing compared to the revelation knowledge I can impart. Wisdom is so priceless that it exceeds the value of any jewel. Did you hear me? Wisdom is more valuable than anything you can buy or sell in this life. You cannot, if you're a wise person, if you're wise, then you, you have it, then you will, do, you're going to do very well. You're going to do well. Why? Because you can discern good from evil. You're, if you know the word of God, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Now you have the word in you, which is the spirit. The sword of the spirit is the word of God when spoken. Did you catch that? If you have the word of God, you're full of the word of God. You're full of wisdom. You've prayed for wisdom. He's, the Father has applied wisdom into your life liberally. Now you can discern between good, evil, what's of the world, what's of, the, what's of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, what's of our Father in heaven. It says in 1 John 2.15 that the love of the Father and the love of the world are incompatible. So a lot of things that we're taught in this life that we should be doing by school, by college, by doctors, professors, they're teaching us worldly wisdom, but the Bible says he will use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Let me turn this down. So there are people with lots of degrees, but what they really possess is worldly wisdom, which is foolishness in the eyes of the Lord. Did you hear me? That's good right there. There are people that have all sorts of degrees with no spiritual wisdom whatsoever. I just lost like 10 people on this live. But hey, if the truth is offensive, it could be because someone's living a lie. This is the truth. The truth will offend people that are caught up living a lie. That's what a stronghold is. A stronghold is when someone holds an argument within themselves that is contrary to scripture. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. Someone said, can I ask your thoughts on the lost books? Are you referring to the, uh, the non-canonicals, the Apocrypha? I believe that's probably what you're referring to when you said the, the lost books, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Book of Jasher, Jubilees, Esdras 2, 3, 4, uh, Enoch, uh, things like that. Listen, here's what I'll say. I don't personally teach out of the Apocrypha, but I'm not against it in any way. If, if you want to own an Apocrypha and study the texts that have been removed from the Bible, um, I would just say ask the Lord for wisdom and discernment. Um, but, but I typically don't encourage people who are newer believers or people that are still kind of on the meat or, or the milk of the word to go into that. Because when you add that extra 56 books or whatever it is, in addition to the 66 books of the Bible, yes, there's, I do believe there's a lot of wisdom in those books. However, it's not for babes. That's just my personal thoughts on it. Don't take that personally. If you have an apocrypha, I'm not against you. I'm not against you teaching I'm not against you teaching the Apocrypha. If you teach the Apocrypha, you know, I'm friends with uh, Melissa. She teaches out of the Apocrypha all the time. And I love to listen to it. I love to listen to, I, I love to listen to what heaven looks like and what hell looks like. It's that's in the book of second Esdras. I love listening and learning about how the fallen angels operated. What did they do? That's the book of Enoch. You can study the book of Enoch. If you're curious how they, how, where pharmacia came from. That's, that's why I believe that's why that was taken out of the Bible. I believe if you have a 1611 a Bible, a lot of those books are still in it. So again, the purpose of me saying these things is to answer that question as good as I can, not to sow doubt or confusion into the chat. If anyone here is like newer in your walk, someone said, can you, um, someone said, can you, um, what was the question? How do you, that was the question. Yeah. I wanted to answer that. How do you know if you were a babe still? Um, if I would say the best way to answer that is, is if you're struggling, if you're struggling to understand salvation, if you're struggling to understand, am I saved by grace? Am I saved by what Jesus did? Um, you know, you're not saved by your works. Let me just say this. And this is something I would tell a new, a, I'm going to pretend I'm talking to a brand new believer that just got saved today. You're saved. Your salvation is a gift from God. Ephesians chapter two, verses eight, and nine say that your salvation is a gift from God. It's not of works. No man can earn it. Oh, that's a great point, Melissa. You said, have you surrendered your flesh yet? That's a good question. There you go. I would agree with that statement, Melissa, 100%. If someone is still walking in the flesh, there you go. That's the answer I was looking for. If you're walking in the flesh, then you still are learning, okay? 
What does it mean to be walking in the flesh? Galatians 5.19 is where I'm going to take you next. Um, I'm going to leave Proverbs 8 pulled up because I think we're going to go back here in just a minute. I want to go to Galatians 5.19. And, th- and this is the milk. This is still milk right here of the word. Um, Galatians 5.19 gives a list of things we should not do. So if people are walking in the flesh, their, their behavior is obvious. I'm quoting Galatians 5.19. Sexual immorality, lustful thoughts, pornography, chasing after things instead of God, manipulating others, hatred of those who get in your way, senseless arguments, resentment when others are favored, temper tantrums, angry quarrels, only thinking of yourself, being in love with your own opinions, being envious of the blessings of others, murder, uncontrolled addictions, wild parties, and all other similar behavior. Haven't I, this is the Apostle Paul, this is what he wrote, haven't I already warned you that those who use their freedoms for these things will not inherit the kingdom of God, the kingdom realm of God is heaven. He's saying people that make a habitual practice of those types of behaviors will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if people are still struggling and they're and they're doing drugs and they're you know they're doing the things I just quoted, hating people, hating others, slander, argue, anger, vicious, malicious intentions towards others. I'm really talking about like if you're behaving like very toxically towards others, you're stuck in the flesh. That's the flesh. Galatians 5:19 or Gal- yeah, Melissa, that's good. Galatians 5:18 through 21. Yes, I agree. Take this message seriously. This is Galatians 5.22, but the fruit. Now it's important we produce good fruit, good fruit that lasts. How? Bearing with godly repentance. Um, But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its varied expressions. Joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. There's no law against love. Amen, Melissa. Great point. So if you walk in love, there's, you're not in sin. Did you hear me? You're not in sin. If you're, if you're caught up in the spirit all day from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, you're serving the Lord. You're not in the flesh. You're in the spirit. Now God is using you. He's moving through you. That's what God's desire is to flow through you, to flow through you, to flow through you. God wants to flow through you. He wants you to let go and allow him to flow. When you're in the spirit, when you're in the spirit, God is moving through you and he's doing his earthly ministry through you because it is no longer you that lives, but Christ inside you. Glory to God. What translation do I read? Uh, this is the Passion translation, but I also have the NLT pulled up. So I go back and forth between Passion and NLT. Um, if the spirit, this is Galatians 5.25. If the spirit is the source of our life, we must also allow the spirit to direct every aspect of our lives. That means we must worship God in spirit and in truth. So if we're walking in the spirit, we're allowing the spirit to direct our lives. So so may we never be arrogant or look down on another for each of us is an original. We must forsake all jealousy that diminishes the values of others. Now, if you really think about jealousy as translated from the Aramaic, Jealousy is when you resent people. Jealousy is when you hate other people that have an anointing on their life, that are favored by God. These people could be in ministry. They could be in your church. It could be in your family. If you hate others because they're doing well, that speaks more about you than it does about them. That's jealousy. I love to break things down the best that I possibly can. And that's jealousy is to hate. Amen. It's to hate others because they're doing good. So there's a, ooh, I have a, this is a good teaching. Some people have a false sense of humility and they end up attacking people that are living righteously. This is the truth. When you hear people saying, I'm just a wicked sinner saved by grace. And then they, and then they see someone preaching on holiness and righteousness and they attack the preacher that says you need to be holy because God is holy. You're quoting the Bible. And, and then there's someone going, well, we'll never be holy because we're wicked sinners. That's actually a false sense of humility. That's still pride. It's still pride. And it could be Jezebel, but it's, it's still pride. That's a false sense of humility. Because, you, yes, when you were born into this world, you were born into sin. But when you were born again, the old man died, and now you resurrected in Christ. And there's no sin in him. 
You're not supposed to live in sin if you're living in the image of Christ that God has created you to walk in. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 says, be imitators of God in all that you do. That's how you bring your father in heaven great glory by being an imitator of Christ. So a false sense of humility is when people keep making excuses to stay in sin. Well, I'm just a sinner, so I'm saved by grace, so I'm going to keep on sinning. That's not the gospel. That's the hyper grace message that the lukewarm church is teaching people. (laughs) Glory. You are holy because the blood of Jesus bought you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have to be holy because he is holy. He's called you to be holy. He's called you to consecrate yourself and come up out of the world. Be separate and touch not what is unclean. (laughs) Hallelujah. Now, if anyone here is wondering how many times will God forgive me every time you repent? 1 John 1, 9, the word of God says he'll forgive you. He is faithful and just to forgive you for all unrighteousness. So if you're stumbling in your walk of faith, if you're struggling with sin, all you have to do is come to Jesus and ask him to help you. It's that easy. There's no complex scenario about this. If you have a drug addiction, pornography addiction, whatever you're struggling with, if it's slander, if it's arguing, if it's getting angry, if, if it's any of these things, ask Jesus to take those, un, those ungodly desires away from you. That's what you have to do. That's all you have to do is turn yourself into Jesus and he forgives you. It's not, and and one of the things the devil tries to do, amen, Stephanie, amen. One of the things the devil tries to do is make you feel guilty if you've sinned, so now you won't pray. The devil will try to make people feel guilty and condemned and give up on prayer. Now, the way that you overcome sin in your life is by continuing to pray even when you struggle. If you are struggling with sin or addiction in your life, but you keep praying every day, God is not going to let go of you. He's not going to give up on you. You've got to keep coming to Jesus every day and laying it down at his feet. So the devil makes people feel defeated. However, if you're hearing a, a powerful sermon, you'll experience conviction to repent. Conviction to repent from sin is not the same thing as guilt, condemnation, and confusion. I hope that helps somebody. I truly do hope that helps somebody. So there's a lot of confusion in the church about what is sanctification. There's there's some pastors and some churches that tell you the minute that you receive Jesus, you're fully healed, you're, you're delivered. The minute you believe the gospel, all the demons had to leave. That's not true. You're not sanctified the second that you believed. Your spirit's made perfect when you're born again, but you can still struggle in the flesh and have demons in your flesh. There's people that need deliverance ministry. They're traumatized. They need inner healing. They need deliverance. They need to forgive people. So there are a lot of churches that think that sanctification is a, oh, done. Now I can go out. I'm good. I'm good to go. No, you. it's a process. You have to walk out your salvation in fear and trembling. It's, it's, this is going to be a day-to-day walk, I'm, I'm certain, until one day we go to be with the Lord. Not everybody will agree with me on that. Some churches teach this differently, but I'm just telling you what I believe to be true, what I'm personally convicted of, is that sanctification is a process of humbling your heart before the Lord, laying down the works of the flesh, and learning to walk in the Spirit, studying the Word of God. The Word of God is in you, then God starts to use you. Your life becomes a ministry because you have an overflow within you of relationship, with intimacy with the Father. Amen. Glory to God. So yeah, I I just... Those are my personal convictions on sanctification, and you don't hear that talked about a lot. You, you hear, you hear that a lot of churches, uh, they have different messages, and some of the denominational religions don't, I personally believe, don't understand sanctification very well. Now, instead of arguing about doctrines and theologies, instead of arguing about the Trinity, things like that, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get into these types of debates. I would rather lead you into learning how to walk in the spirit and laying down the works of the flesh. Then you're not going to have these problems and you're not going to want to argue with people that lack understanding, that lack understanding. So you typically, you guys are not going to see me on TikTok getting into debates. Usually you're not going to find fire truth in a debate platform where I'm arguing with people and allowing people to 
scream at me and, and debate scripture because guess what? The Pharisees in Jesus' day loved to debate scripture and they couldn't even discern who Jesus was when he stood before them. <laughs> so Proverbs 6.16 tells us not to, not to sow discord when people are getting argumentative and upset. Um, I don't do that. I don't get into those live streams. I really don't get into those live streams. I don't get into those live streams. Hey, sister. God bless you. Hey, God bless, bless you, you, sister. How are you doing? I'm great. Bless. Uh, highly favored. Amen. 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 If you uh, if you had anything on your heart to share or to add, uh, anything God has been showing you, anything God has been teaching you, uh, anything you feel led to share, please do. The Lord was talking to me this morning about Ishmael and Isaac. We are in a season right now where Ishmael, Islam, is the number one religion in the world. Wow. But And so Ishmael was the firstborn of Abraham, and he was promised to have a holy nation, a large nation, but he was not the inheritance of God. Isaac is the inheritance, the promise. And narrow is the way to eternal life. And if you find it, broad is the way to destruction. So what are we seeing in the world today? We're seeing Muslims, Islam, the number one religion, very broad to destruction. They deny Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And the Word of God says if you deny the Son, the Son will deny you before the Father. He is the way, the truth, the life. So we're seeing another evidence that we are in the last days because history repeats itself. So here we are in the last days, Ishmael, and we're waiting on Isaac, which Jesus Christ is a, is a uh, representation of Isaac, the promise. So that was one thing the Lord was talking to me about this morning. Wow. So I was, like, I was like, Lord, what can we do? to minister to Muslims and try to get them to convert. And the Lord was telling me, they're not the promise. They're not the promised seed. There's not going to be many that's going to convert, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. Did so, you hear that a, lo a lot of the Muslims have Jesus appear to them in dreams? <clears throat> have you heard about yeah. that? Yes. They think of him as a prophet, like Muhammad. Oh, but they yeah, did, yeah. But yeah. they deny his divinity. Mm -hmm. And so we need to keep them in prayer because I do believe there can be some that can be converted. Um, we need to keep them in prayer. We really do because there is a lot, a lot. There's a lot Muslim. on this app, too. There's a yes. lot on this app. Yes. There's a lot on this app, and I've learned <laughs> that the other thing I've run into, and I think you've seen this as well, Melissa, is when you let someone of that religion up into the box, they start wanting to teach what they believe and try to convert Christians into their belief. Yeah. And if, if someone, and this is a, this, and this is going to uh, be powerful too. And Melissa, I know you know this Hebrews six, verse four says, if someone becomes a Christian and becomes born again and they leave the faith, they can't come back. They can't, That's right. they, you can't get saved uh, twice. That's right. But if they were Muslim and they have not ever been a Christian, That's they, right. could be, they could be converted. They could be possibly. saved. Yes, 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 absolutely. Yes, yes. So, so but Hebrews... I do believe if I do believe if you're going to try to minister to them, you need to know and be sound in your faith. Because yeah. they, like, you, like you said, they will try to convert you. And that's not the objective. We need to right. try to convert them. So the, the one thing that I understand that they, they typically believe, though, is they are encouraged to debate. They want to argue. They want to debate scripture. That's part of their faith is debating and arguing. And then that's like the Pharisees. They did the very same thing in Jesus's day. So I was I looking at their religion. I was looking at their religion and studying it. And they're very, very much uh, law, very much law and order. I mean, you know, the women have to be covered. You know, they can't touch a woman unless it's, they're married. I mean, all these different laws. And I got to thinking about it. They're keeping these laws that that the the old covenant had to a T, but yet they they don't have the spirit. They, they don't have the spirit because they deny the son of God. So it's like at the end of the day, what's the point in keeping all these laws when they're, they don't have salvation secured? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So yes. it's like. 
it just goes to further prove that the, the religious spirit that is operating through all these different religions as well. That 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 is true. That is true. It's a very religious spirit, just like the Pharisees had a religious spirit. The Pharisees tried to keep the law perfectly, claimed they kept the law perfectly, but Jesus walked in front of them and showed them that they were hypocrites. He exposed their need for this, a savior. I believe where this stemmed from was Ishmael wanted so desperately to be uh, a part of the inheritance. And so he thought that he, by starting this religion, would be able to secure his, his uh, self. And it just stemmed from that. Um, it, it's almost that, like Freemasonry as well. If you study Freemasonry, you're going you're gonna to end up running into Jewish mysticism, Jewish Kabbalah, mm, the yes. Tanakh. You're gonna in the Sanhedrin. You're gonna. You're, I mean, this is like very deep stuff that I, I don't even feel called to teach on that necessarily. But yes. I've touched on it enough to know what yes. it is, and it's dark. It's very dark stuff. And I would encourage anyone that's new in the faith, don't look into these things. I would encourage you to stay in the Word of God. You don't need to lead the leave the Bible. You don't need to leave the Word of God to find Amen. the truth because Jesus Christ is the truth. The Jesus way, is the truth. the truth and the life. And the life. Amen. <laughs> No and the only the way father, to the Father is through him. It's through Jesus Christ. There's no <laughs> other way. We said the same thing at the same time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Glory to God. Right. Yes, Lord. Amen. That's, that's so, so good. So, yeah, if, if a person receives the Holy Spirit, that means they gave their life to Jesus. And then they choose to, to depart from Christianity they cannot come back. Hebrews 4, isn't that right? Hebrews 4? Hebrews 6, verses Hebrews 4 through 6. six. Explains yeah. that. Hebrews 6 explains that. If you taste the gifts of God, which is the Holy Spirit, and you depart, and I actually know someone on this app who did that. They were a Christian, had the Holy Spirit, they left Christianity, and now are a Buddhist. They are a Buddhist, and they debate Christianity, and they try to... Um, crucify the son of god you cannot put him back to the cross to open shame a second time if you depart from the faith you become a reprobate mind an apostate and the word that is used i think in the passion translation is is to repudiate which means to divorce they they can divorce themselves from uh, christ and that's also by the way melissa that that similar terminology you can find galatians chapter 5 verse 4 says the same mm-hmm. thing People who try to go back under the law, they can fall from grace and separate yes, themselves I've from Christ. If someone leaves from Christianity and goes into Judaism trying to keep the law, mm-hmm. that's that like the Torah. People yes. that try to keep the whole Torah. You fall from grace. Remember, yep. I shared my testimony with that. Someone in the chat, I think Bill, Blackley, Bill Beckley said, what about the prodigal who came back? He didn't depart from the faith. He, he backslid he into lukewarm. sin. Yeah, he didn't, that's he, totally he, different. <laughs> Someone uh, falling into sin is not the same thing as yeah, forsaking their faith and denying Christ. Right. If they deny Christ and they are trying to, like, say, you know, he's not the son of God, that, that the Bible's not real, these kinds of things, they, they're, they are, they're not just in sin and being lukewarm. They have changed their, turned their back on God, so to speak. I tell yeah. you who it is on here. Her name is Biddy Buddha. B-I-D-D. Biddy B-I-D-D Buddha, something like that is her name. And you'll see her. She has a podcast on YouTube. She debates Christians. She proves she knows the word of God better than any pastor knows. She was uh in So the, does the in devil. The, in the, yeah, she was in the prophetic. She was teaching Bible school, all kinds of stuff. And she, for whatever reason, has left the faith and now she is debating Christians on YouTube. She's an atheist into Buddhism, and she flat out says the Son of God is not real and all these things. So she's a prime example of Hebrews 6, in my opinion. So so the, so the, the, the thesis is about this is this is not talking about someone that has fallen into sin or addiction. This is not right. the, this is not a prodigal son from Luke chapter 15. The prodigal son is someone that they fell into – they were living with pigs, man. I mean they were really, really struggling, right? But they were still a child of God at the end yeah. of the day. And the father yeah. accepted the son who had completely blown it all. You can be a Christian and blow your life on drugs and the mud and the mall. You could go out there and do every all everything wrong. Someone could be on skid row 
could be on death row for murder and God will take you back. You're still a Christian. You just fell into some type of something. You, right. and you repent, you confess, and you come back to Christ. That's not the same thing as leaving Christianity altogether and departing to go into a different religion. That's, and, the, and, that's totally and different. And it's different, too, than a person who, who believes or says with their mouth, professes with their mouth that they love Jesus, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. I mean, if they don't have the Holy Spirit, then they haven't departed from the faith and can't return. But if they have the Holy Spirit and they, and they walk away, then that's different. Because you know how like, you have some people like, for example, my mother. My mother believes in Jesus, but she's not born again. So if she was to, she wouldn't be a character for Hebrews 6. Like if, like say if I was, because I have the Holy Spirit, I know I have the Holy Spirit. So if I was to turn my back on God now, I couldn't come back. Kevin, Kevin Zadai talked about this one day. He said that um, basically the same way you become a Christian, if someone goes out and unbecomes a Christian, they unbecome one. Do you understand? There's mm -hmm. there are satanic churches that are trying to get people to renounce their salvation. This yes. is talking about if people renounce their salvation, they can never come back. Now, I saw a video on TikTok the other day. It was a satanic, satanic video, and there was people that was doing satanic baptizing. That's what I'm talking about. It was about. unbaptizing Christians they're, with they're satanic baptisms. Right. It's dark. That's very dark, very demonic. It's terrible to think. It's terrible to even consider that. That is absolutely horrible. It's, it's a horrible thing to think about. It's terrifying to think about what the word says, what the word says. So you cannot go, you can't go backwards. You, Someone said, how do you, somebody asked how you know you have the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, I would say, I, I would say, ask the Lord to show you, go get baptized in water. You know, I personally believe my personal conviction is if you're if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can pray in tongues. You can pray in the tongues. You can pray in the spirit. You can enter into God's presence. As a matter of fact, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will carry God's presence with you everywhere that you go. I had someone ask me this the other day, and, and I've had people get very upset about this. But I've provided several ex examples in the book of Acts where when people are filled with the Holy Spirit, they speak in new tongues. It's all throughout the book of Acts. Everywhere the Holy Spirit fell and filled people, they spoke in your tongues. 16. Mark, Mark 16, 16, 17. Even Jesus says that you will cast out demons in the power of Jesus' name Heal and speak sick. in tongues. Heal the sick and speak in new tongues. Now there's people out there that may have the gift of tongues and they've never used it. And then they get very offended and they get angry. Listen, I don't argue with these types of people. I, I just, you know, I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to debate. I believe there's a difference between having the Holy Spirit and being full of the Spirit. You have the parable of the five wise and five foolish virgins as an example. They didn't have their oil, their oil full, five of them. Perhaps um, walking in the flesh could be a part of that. Yes. Yes, I agree. They haven't. They haven't. They haven't died to self. They haven't crucified the flesh. They're not walking in the spirit. They're living in carnality. I would believe. Now, there's a lot of people that don't like to discuss the parable. I've heard. I've heard people say they don't understand the parable. I believe the five unwise virgins represent the lukewarm church. The people that are stuck in sin. Just you know, lukewarm. You know, Jesus said in Revelation. What did he say in Revelation? Was it three fifteen? that he'll spew them out of the mouth if you're lukewarm. Uh, demons, listen, demons will manifest. When you when you pray in tongues, if I start praying in tongues mm. right now, I'm sure there'd be demons manifesting in this chat. Hallelujah. That's just the way it is. I'll pray in the spirit for a moment. I feel like I should. Holy fire, holy fire over this live in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus over this live in Jesus' name. Holy fire. In Jesus' name over this live. Holy fire over this live in Jesus' name. You'll typically see that when you start praying in tongues, the demons start arguing in the chat. The demons start coming out in people in the chat room. This is when they want to argue and they want to just say stuff and, and they, they just want to debate. 
you'll start seeing the religious spirits, the religious Jezebel spirits coming out and, and wanting to argue against people of God. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> there you go. You got, you got religion. Where does it say in the Bible? Other than an act, I think it was the Acts chapter one or the Acts chapter two about the different languages. Uh, so, in the Bible, I, do you know that the Holy? I've seen this. Let me share this testimony. So, I was on a Zoom call one night with this lady. Never met her before in my life. Young girl, nineteen years old. There was a woman come in the live that could not speak English. She spoke Portuguese. And she was in desperation for deliverance. So this 19-year-old prophet prayed to the Holy Spirit and asked the Holy Spirit to speak Portuguese through her to that woman. She didn't know Portuguese from Adam. The next thing we know, we heard amen. Then that 19-year-old girl started speaking fluent Portuguese out of her mouth to that woman. Because the Holy Spirit knows all languages. Your, your heavenly language is a language not of this earth. Amen. So for you to sit there and say that it's not a known language or a different language like the apostles had, who are you to say that? Do you know your heavenly language? Have you heard the heavenly language the angels speak? We have to be a little bit more open-minded because if you're speaking something and you think it's gibberish or it's not a language— God the Father knows what it is. As a matter of fact, that opens another door too. And when people talk critical about the things like that, it kind of starts They're to coming cross. against the Holy Spirit. They're and coming then, against the Holy Spirit. And, then and it's, they, it's sad. Right. And when, when people do that, Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 12, there is a sin that cannot be forgiven in this life or the next. Yes. So people need to be careful that they don't do that in ignorance. The Bible says people perish for a lack of knowledge. Every, everything is done through faith. <clears throat> a baby, when a baby first starts talking at six, eight months old, the baby is saying blah, 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 until it learns to talk. That's the same way with tongues. When you start talking in tongues, you're talking in faith to God. And the Holy Spirit is speaking through you utterances and groanings is what the scripture says that man knows not to pray for. <clears throat> There's someone that's been saying, please let me up, please let me up, please let me up. Um, let me see. Thank you, Lord. Caleb, did you have a question? Here, I'll bring you up for a second. How are, how are you doing, Caleb? <clears throat> yes, amen, Rhonda. That's right. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, so can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. So you're so what you're saying is basically like if someone leaves Christianity, they're, you know, I don't know, and they find Christ again, they're damned to hell. The Bible says in Hebrews read chapter 6. Read it to him. Read, read Hebrews 6. Read, read it to him. I'm going to pull it up. I'll break this down to you. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 is a warning to never turn away. It is impossible to restore an apostate. For once a person has come into God's light and has tasted the gifts of the heavenly realm and has received the Holy Spirit, and feasted on the good word of God and has entered into the power of the age that is breaking in. If he abandons his faith, there is no use even trying to lead him to repentance. By their sin of apostasy, they recrucify the son of God and have publicly repudiated him. That word repudiate, if you look up the definition, it means to divorce. They divorce so themselves. So let's break that down. So he's saying it's, it's contingent on faith. So... You, have, you must ensure that you keep faith in Jesus Christ. You have tasted the heavenly gifts. What's the heavenly gifts? That's the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. They've been born again. They've been born again, this person, and they have lost their faith in God for whatever reason. 
if that happens, they can't come back. Is what he is what that verse is saying. So like, okay, I don't because I don't know. Now I'm a little confused. I mean, I get what y'all are saying, but like, I'm just trying to put that towards me because like I was raised Christian, but I really okay. never like got into it. Does that make sense? Like, I never. We weren't the type of Christians to go to church every day. We weren't reading our Bibles every day, but you know. So you weren't born again. Oh, so, and then, like, I'm, I feel like in 2020, I just, like, was trying to seek something else. Because, like, I, that was, like, a, a low point in my life. And then recently, I mean, my dad has, you know, he's, you know, really into it now. And that's all we talk about. Um, yeah, Caleb, I don't think this applies to you. I really yeah, don't. This, this, I... this isn't, this isn't, what this is talking about someone that knew that they were saved. They knew Jesus. They were born again. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, and then they went out and they completely unbecame a Christian. They they went and became yeah. something else. Yeah. Yeah. See, like I had like I call it my coming to God moment. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple days or no, like two weeks ago, I like I just I hit You're one of those points again, and you know this I was. I'm sorry. What? I'm gonna say this ain't you because this is not you. You don't have to worry about this because it's long. <laughs> As long as there is conviction in your heart towards God, to then you are not an apostate. Right. Once you become an apostate, your heart is hardened towards God. You could care less about being convicted or worried about losing your salvation or anything like that. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I would okay. agree. I, w I wouldn't take, take this message and get scared by it. A lot of people get scared by that scripture. There's another scripture in, in Hebrews 10, 26. I'll share it. It's another warning. There's two warnings written in the book of Hebrews. There's one in Hebrews 6, verse 4, and then there's Hebrews 10, 26. This is talking about people that, that go into sin real bad and they never repent. If we continue to persist in deliberate sin after we have known and received the truth, there is not another sacrifice for sin to be made for us. But this would qualify one for the certain terrifying expectation of judgment and the raging fire ready to burn up his enemies. So... What this is saying is, is that when people hear that all you have to do is just believe one time in Jesus, but you don't have to repent from your sin, that's actually not the gospel. The gospel is repentance, that people have to come uh, and die to themselves, die to the flesh, and that's what sanctification is. It's when you pursue God. It's when you have a desire to know God. You have a desire to know God's word and not sin against God. People that the, the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 is really talking about people that know what they're doing is wrong and they keep doing it anyways. Yeah. yeah. See, like I, like I said, like this past weekend, you know, I like, I don't know what came over me, but I went to church and like, I feel like it's just completely changed my entire like aspect on everything. Like, yeah, I'm trying to turn away from my like desires. There's like, grace, I, brother. There's grace. You got, you're under grace. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I believe like, you're just, yeah, keep God going. God will finish in you what he started. See, like, he, yeah, I, I stopped, you know, I'm trying to stop being gay. And, you know, it that was like a really hard patch for me in my yeah. life. And, you know, trying to, you know, seek out, you know, well, does God love me if I'm gay? You know, what's yes, going to happen to me? And, you know, so I'm just trying to break away from all my desires in this of this world. And I'm getting baptized next weekend. So it's awesome. awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Praise the God. Flesh, yeah. Look, the flesh is weak, brother, but the spirit's willing. As long as you're willing to try to lay things down, the Lord is going to give you grace and he's going to help you overcome. Absolutely. I was a, I was a drug addict. I've been sober 23 days today. And Jesus delivered me from the last drug I was addicted to 23 days ago. I was a bisexual. He delivered me from that. I mean, I was a prostitute. He delivered me from that. I was into witchcraft. He delivered me from that. Just keep talking to the Lord and keep trying. Amen. And I promise you, he will help you. And when you're ready, when you're ready, he's going to de deliver you of every homosexual desire that it will be just like you never had it. There's a story on a, I think it was Isaiah Saldivar. Man, you need to YouTube this one, man. There's a story of a, of someone that was, uh, they they had transitioned even. There was a transition person. They fully transitioned. Then they end up becoming born again Christian and they learned their identity in Christ and God showed them. God began to speak to them and told them who they were. And the person even went back to their original identity and they're no longer living a new identity. 
of the world, the transitioned mm -hmm. gender identity that's, that they thought Ashton. that they were supposed to. Yeah. Ashton, can you bring Brother Rob up? Yeah. Yeah. Is he in here? Yeah. Okay. I think Sorry. So. I didn't even know he was there. Yeah. I brought him up. There he is. God bless you, brother. Yeah. There was just, I don't know. Like, I just started, like, I did, like, a, I looked at my life and. I just saw, like, it just wasn't, like, I was constantly seeking something, you know, I have a great job, I have, you know, a roof over my head, but there was just, like, always something missing, yep. and I couldn't cover that up with, like, alcohol, you know what that's I mean, right. or going out and partying, so, yeah. That's so true, that's, that's so true, I mean, you just nailed it on the head, that's the truth, when we feel rejected and not, and when we don't feel love in our life, we tend to try to fill that black hole inside of us with everything. Dr I did it. Drugs, strip clubs, addiction to cocaine and Adderall, go, hanging out with dancers yeah. at night, money, trying to earn a lot of money. I drove a Porsche. I had an 87 Porsche. What, you know, I love old air, wide body Porsche. I, I've had a lot of nice stuff for a younger guy, yet I still was never happy. I ended up losing everything. I lost my career. I lost my business. I lost all my vehicle. I mean, you name it. I was on top of the world in my 20s, totally successful. Boom, lost my health, lost my career, lost my business. I mean, you. I had nothing to show in terms of worldly success, but now I have, to, I have perfect peace in my life. Action. I have the joy, the fruit of the Holy Spirit in me, and you're going to have that, brother. I want to reassure you, God has led you here today not mm. to condemn you, but to show you his love and his grace. Hallelujah. Okay? Hallelujah. You're loved by God and fully accepted. Okay? God accepts you right as you are. There's no question yes. about that. No confusion. Have no confusion about the love of Christ is for you. Thank you. You're fully accepted by God. Now, sanctification starts where, you, where you end and Christ begins in you. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Ashton, Ashton, see if you get a prophetic word for him. I feel like you're going to get something. I believe that I believe that was one. I believe God's led him here today to 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 get. so brother, your life will become an example of God's grace. God is mm. going to use you to witness to people that have experienced the exact same lifestyle that you're coming out of because here's what happens. The anointing that's coming upon your life is in your testimony. The power is in your testimony. The power, the fire, the power is in what you've overcome. So addiction, strife, all these identity and confusion, all these things you've struggled with your entire life, you will be able to go back into the past and bring people. And the Bible says in Jude chapter, I believe, 20 or 23. I can find it in one second. It says in snatching some out of the fire, saving them with fear. You're going to be that person that snatches people out of the fire. People that were headed, to, people that were not headed to the good place. You're going to come in and say, Jesus set me free of addiction, Amen. of sin and everything. It's Jude 22. Thank you. Amen. Glory to God. Your brother, you're going to be very powerful in, in, the, in faith and in Christ. He's going to use you in a mighty way. Just Hallelujah. keep coming back to God every There's single day. He'll use you. Amen. Mighty anointing, mighty anointing there. Yes. Amen. Hey, Caleb, I want you to repeat this after me. Say, okay. thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm your son. I'm your son. I'm not a beggar. I'm, <laughs> I'm not a beggar. I feel the joy of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm already free. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm already free. I'm already, I'm afraid. I'm already I'm, free. I'm already free. I'm already free. free. I'm sorry. <laughs> because your word said. Because your word said. He who the sun sets free. He who the sun sets free. Is free indeed. Is free indeed. Father, we break the chains and the cords of wickedness. And the tactics in the plan and the weapons. We sever them and break them. By the anointing, we adjure every assignment, every weight of this man of God 
We break this. We come against it by the yes. blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. He's already free because the stripes that yes. you shed on Calvary, hallelujah. Yes. You paid his sin debt, Lord. Listen to me, Caleb. When you look in the mirror next time, you are so changed and transformed. You are a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new because you're a son and you have a rightful in right to the inheritance because your father loves you. I don't know about your father on the earth, my precious blood brother, but God the Father sees you righteous because of the blood and justified just as it. Now, my brother Ashton, encourage you. Just walk out your salvation, my brother, through sanctification. If you take one step forward and two back, two forward, brother, keep going forward. Because Paul said, forgetting what is behind, I press on toward the prize, toward the high calling. So, brother, the past is in the past, Caleb. There's no more woulda, shoulda, coulda. There's no more regret. We can't change the past, my brother. You can't drive a car in a rear view mirror. Yes, you could, but don't go in reverse. Go forward. Hallelujah. Come on, Caleb. Shout Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. Caleb, do you speak in tongues? Do you have the gift of tongues, the Holy Spirit and fire? I've never... No, I don't think so. I've never All right, really done All right, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, you're born again, right? You've accepted Christ as Savior? Uh, I mean, I'm working on it. <laughs> he's got to get baptized, Rob. Rob, he's got to get baptized next week. I don't know if that yeah, matters. Caleb, let me ask you a question. Have you accepted Christ? Do you believe Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross for your sin debt? Because, my friend Caleb, all have sinned and fallen short. No one's you, – you can't earn this. We all have a debt, my brother. We can't repay it through morality. Do you, do you believe you go make heaven your home? Do you believe Jesus is your Lord? Yes. You do. So you've accepted Christ. You've been born again, right? Uh, yes. Okay, so Father, fill him with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Yes,ちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっ
just always know that you will you, you're gonna know a good tree by its fruit so when you see people that witness in love they're testifying of Jesus but some of these TikToks where you see people fighting and arguing over scripture brother I want to encourage you just don't even try to don't try to fit in and be like them or find acceptance if you see people that have bad fruit and all they do is argue and sow discord and division my personal I can't tell anyone what to do but this is just personally what I do I just I'm, I have to take my own advice I stay out of those live streams where there's no one getting witnessed, no one's getting saved, no one's getting healed or set free. All you see is division. I stay out of those TikToks. This app is a very wild platform. You'll come across people that are godly, that witness and, and, and help to do deliverance and pray over people. And then you'll find uh, Christian or so-called Christian pages where there's no fruit. It's just argument. It's just the flesh. Yeah. And um, just you'll you'll know because you feel God's presence. You're gonna feel God's presence. Yeah. See, like I was one of those people that, like, you know, before I just I started all of this, like I, um, I would go and argue with people about yeah. it, and um, it you kind of just hit like a brick wall. Yep. You can't. Yep. You don't really get anywhere with these people. So that's it's right. Like, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I don't know. Because you know what you're doing. You're fighting against God. Now, listen, guys, I got to testify. I learned not to testify prematurely. <clears throat> Ashton and Melissa about a month ago on a Saturday night prayed for me. I think it was the first night I met them for my esophagus. I've not been able to swallow for about eight years in a normal fashion. Half a hero would take me 45 minutes to an hour. I would, I would almost choke on the food. I would have to regurgitate it. Sometimes I would throw up. My kids would be like, ah, gross. I'm choking in the kitchen. They don't care. Dad's choking. They just don't want to hear me choking and puking. I'm like, yeah. thanks, guys. You know, I may need a, an emergency help over here. So I never had this surgery with the balloon because my friend had it because it's a dilated. They got to dilate the esophagus. And when they had dilated his esophagus, they burst it and he went into a coma. Uh, man, I've suffered in and out of this. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I am not kidding you. My swallowing is like normal. It's bl steak. Glory to God. I, I'm, like, I'm like blown <laughs> away, man. I don't Praise even God. know what to say. I can't, I'm telling you guys, Hallelujah. I couldn't eat like on, filet God. mignon or steak. <laughs> Praise know, God. And, and um, salmon. Um, even, even, listen, even eggs in the morning, yeah. I would always have to have a lot of water and it's incredible, man. And they prayed for me, man. They fought for me. And let me just suggest this guys. I was on with brother Ashton for about an hour and a half yesterday. And I just, my legs are cramping up for crying out loud because I haven't straightened my legs out like a kid playing video games. <laughs> yeah. And then I went on at six. I just went on the TikTok at six o'clock, and I see my live stream. I said, "He's still on, my God! This <laughs> is four hours." <laughs> so you know, I just want to encourage. And this guy, listen, he never said, "Rob, could you do this for me?" But listen, our precious brother is believing for a vehicle because he's going places. And I believe when he gets the vehicle, it's a prophetic sign that the wheels are in motion. Hallelujah. He's had a little setback in his health. He had the Lyme, correct? The Lyme yeah, thing? Yeah, they diagnosed me with late-stage yeah, Lyme so disease. Yeah, so it's been a couple years and hasn't been able to work in a proper... <clears throat> but he's been ministering and pouring his heart out two hours, four. Sometimes he tells me 60 hours. Sometimes they'll come on. So to me, he's pastoring a church, caring as a shepherd for God's people. If you feel to reciprocate, and like me, which I'm going to do, if you received in the natural excuse me if you received it in the spiritual and you want to sow in the natural our precious our precious brother's cash app all lowercase letters is dollar sign ashton just like it's spelled a-s-h-t-o-n and it's grs ashton yeah it's in the chat ashton gsr 85 yeah so it's there. dollar sign ashton gsr GSR or GRS? It's GSR, Ashton GSR85. Just go in, just go on his thumbnail, guys. 
And I would believe it'd be proper, man, if someone feels this so twenty dollars, fifty. Listen, we're not prosperity pricks. <laughs> he, 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 I said, ask him, did people sew yesterday? Because I was curious. Because I did this. He said, yeah, Rob, three people sewed. Three he was people, so yeah. excited. Praise so God. if you feel this sew and reciprocate, even on a monthly basis, a weekly basis, because this, this, this man of God, this minister, is pouring his heart out. To the people of God, and He's teaching, and He's imparting, and He's sowing and training. So, so thank you so much. Someone put his cash app in there. That's my thank wife. You so much. <laughs> thank oh, you, honey. That's his wife. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bless that's you, sister. Wife. I had a dream I'm last night. I was getting a car. I had a dream last night. In the dream, I saw a title. I saw a Florida title <laughs> in a dream, and it was coming to me. And I saw a tag. To go with the title because i don't have a car right now so i saw the tag and the title yeah. and I'm, I'm i'm warring in the spirit i am i'm contending in faith i know i'm going to yeah. get a car i'm believing for yeah, a car or a truck the devil wants him or wants to mobilize him and doesn't want him going places because he doesn't want this message going forth so in the natural he's trying to constrict and constrain and suffocate his, but I'm telling you, God's going to loose this man. Hallelujah. I don't Hallelujah. endorse many people, guys. I've known a lot of people if I've known the names. Trust me. I know many of the generals, guys. I could say the names. I've known a lot of them. And I could be around them. But, you know, I'm around Jesus. So, listen, promotion doesn't come from the east to the west. It comes from the Lord. But, Caleb, how do you feel, man? Testify. Hallelujah. I feel good. I was actually just about to ask all like what verses I should read or like chapters. Because like I have like a hard time reading the Bible because it's like you have to like break it down because it's such an old yeah. text. You know what I mean? And I have like the English standard version just because it's a little bit better for me to read um, and understand it. So I I don't know what I don't know what um, verses to start reading. <laughs> I'm kind of love, just like, on TikTok. I love Galatians. Personally, Galatians 5, uh, 1 through, you can read Galatians 1 through 5 in like 35 minutes, 45 minutes, depending on how fast you read. Uh, me and Melissa studied Galatians, what was it, Melissa, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, we did a Galatians word study uh, privately on Facebook, and we did it yeah. in like 35 minutes, and we were talking yeah. about scriptures. We read the whole book of Galatians between the two of us in like 45 minutes. Oh, Galatians wow. will teach you how to walk in the spirit how to put to death the flesh, um, the a book of Ephesians, you're going to learn your idea. If you study the book of Ephesians, you're going to learn you're seated in the heavenly realms. You're seated in Christ Jesus. You're playing from a pray. You, when you pray, you're praying from heaven into earth, not the other way around. See, you think a lot of people are like, man, I'm stuck in earth. In the spirit, when you're born again, you're praying from heaven. You're just basically bringing heaven down to earth. Just yeah. think of it like a think of it like a chain, and you just yank that chain from heaven, and the windows come open. When you pray, your but the heavens bust open, and you'll see favor, abundant favor poured out on your life. I'll say this personally: in my personal life, I know the devil has fought me hard in my finances. I know I have favor. I have immense favor. Glory to God! I have a lot of favor on my life, but I know the devil has fought me with delay. Yeah. And I'm, I, it mm -hmm. is he can't he can't stop the favor. He can't stop the favor. I want to pray for uh, wisdom for you, Brother Caleb. Um, there's a prayer in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. There's a beautiful prayer that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened with understanding. Um, give me one second here. I'm flipping through my Bible. Uh, it's a beautiful prayer for enlightenment, to understand wisdom and to receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation, understanding um, that your eyes be open and that you have peace in your heart. Amen. And then Ashton, we need you to pray for Elise. I just feel drawn to this Elise. I need deliverance from an evil altar of human sacrifice and people in the comments are saying Elise keep posting so they know you need prayer okay. so brother Ashton Elise Elise sister Elise, Elise I need deliverance and, and then I got a word for her if you feel too brother Ashton yeah you can bring a she doesn't have enough followers to bring up but if you want to share a word with her go ahead and yeah. I'll read this in a yeah, Elise, I just feel like there's some ort and bitterness and unforgiveness 
And as you release and forgive the people that have hurt you and wounded you and victimized you and abused you, you know, at least Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing now, even if they did it on purpose. Forgive the purpose, the person, my sister, and God will deal with the act. So I just feel you need to release people, forgive them. And Caleb, if anyone's dropped you or hurt you, say, Father God, I'm going to forgive them by faith, Lord. I know yes. it's not easy, but by grace, forgive those that are hurt you and abused you and wounded you. And see, like, when I, that, like, reminds me, like, my cousin, um, she hasn't really been the best person for, like, our entire lives. Um, I'm not going to make it a long story, but um, both of her parents are not in her life, so our grandparents took care of her, and um, family business, they took the majority of the money, like my cousin and my grandparents, so we live very poor. Um, and then when I moved out to Colorado, um, and her and I, you know, you know, rekindled our relationship, you know, she still was doing those things, and we recently just had a falling out. Um, and I've never ever gone off on someone like that before and it was like this burden well like after i like you know i started seeking god more it i, I don't know i just called her and you know i i, I apologize i wasn't asking for her, you know you know i'm sorry from her or anything but i just felt like i had to get that off my chest and i just i feel a lot better like it's I don't know. It's helped me a lot, and I don't have to, you know, worry about that lingering over me, and then the things that I've said. So, yeah. Were you close to her, your cousin? Kind of. I mean, she was like my sister, but right. you know, you know, you start thinking about all these things that you know this person does to you, and it like, I don't know. It just all came out that day, but I don't know. After I, I found myself becoming more peaceful. Yeah. And forgiving. And I'm trying to not cuss a lot. That was like a huge, it's like a huge problem of mine. Yeah. And I don't know, I feel like I've gotten better since the day I, you know, decided to follow Jesus again. So. Hallelujah. Um, Hallelujah. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll go on, I believe, to, to do even do ministry and to start witnessing the people that have been traumatized with unforgiveness as well see when you what you're i believe what you're experiencing is forgiveness not only for her for your cousin but for yourself now when you start to forgive yourself you're going to have freedom you're not going to have any heavy feelings and these any emotions that were attacking you depression fear worry if you've ever experienced like that self-condemnation just overall lack of happiness. Almost, the feeling I'm trying to describe, I think, is disparity, despondency even. Yeah. When you forgive yourself, you, you, one thing I've had to learn is not to be hard on myself anymore. I used to be so hard on myself. And then that would carry on to me being hard onto other people. I would expect so much out of myself. And then if other people didn't meet those expectations as well, I would typically find myself disappointed. So I've learned to manage my expectations of other people. And then also I have to establish boundaries in my personal life as well. Um, that tends to help a lot. Teeping, basically teaching people to respect you is all. Yeah. And I just, I don't know. I feel a lot better now. Like, you know, I was, I don't know, this whole month and after, you know, coming to God, like, I just, I don't know, like, everything's kind of changed for me. Yeah. Like, I was going to oh, do so much stuff for my 21st birthday that was coming up. Now I have, like, no urge for that. Yeah, um, like the drinking and partying and all that. Through on the 21st well, yeah. day, like Daniel. Daniel chapter 10. Hey, Melissa, can you encourage God's people on how to break soul ties? Soul ties, like Amen. going into relationships that were illegal, suspicious, weren't right in the eyes of God, sex before marriage, naturally, uh, giving your heart away to people, um, joining yourself. But how do people break soul ties and then maybe pray? I feel you'd encourage yes. the people Amen. of God. Amen. Yeah, I mean, I so soul ties are not just sexual. It, soul ties can take place whenever you give a part of your heart to someone. <laughs> so when that happens, basically, 
I'll use the sexual part as an example, but basically when you when you have sexual intimacy with someone, a part of your soul transfers into them and a part of their soul transfers into you. So if they have any unclean spirit, you're going to receive their unclean spirits and the unclean spirits you have, they're going to receive. So um, you know how like you can have an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend or an ex-wife or ex-husband and you'll all of a sudden like 10 years will go by and you'll start dreaming about them or you'll see them and you'll have all these feelings come back up in your mind and you don't understand why? It's because there's a connection in the spirit that needs to be broken that hasn't been broken. Melissa, so you, you just convicted someone. You just, uh, there's a person in the chat. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I apologize. There's a person oh, in the ahead. chat. They said they're in a relationship with a married man. Can you give them a word, Melissa, and, and expound on, can okay. keep going? All right. Well, if you're in a relationship with a married man, number one, you have entered into their marriage. You've made a soul tie with this man, and he's already in covenant with a, with his wife. When he married his wife, he entered into a covenant in God's eyes with her. And he's committed adultery and broken his end of the covenant by being in a relationship with you. Adultery is a major sin. It is breaking a commandment. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So you need to come out of that and you need to repent because in the eyes of God, you're going to be just as guilty as he is for committing adultery. And so you don't want to have to stand in front of Jesus and that not be covered under the blood. And furthermore, it's just not a good thing to be. So you need to you need to come out of that. You need to repent for that. You need to break ties with him, cut all communication off, and you need to break the ungodly soul tie to him and free him from that ungodly soul tie in the spirit and let whatever goes on between him and his wife be between him and his wife. Melissa, why do you, you think they should pray? Yes, for absolutely. But should, should this person pray for restoration to occur between the, the man and the wife? <laughs> yes. Maybe? Yes, and we need to pray for whoever that is. Find out what her name is. Uh, we need to pray for her to... Okay, the person that said that was can, can, Candid underscore E. They have a logo. Their screen name is She's like... Been a, talking. She's been talking with a married man. Have you, uh, Talking with a married man is, is one thing. Getting in bed with a married man is another. So right, right. are you just talking with him or, or or have you crossed that line? Well, you let me say this. There's spiritual adultery. So I don't talk yes. to any women unless I feel their motives are pure and it's for ministerial purposes. Because I'm That's married cool. yeah. naturally now. If this woman is having sexual relations with this man and this woman thinks this man is going to leave this wife, his wife or her, this man will do the same thing to you with another sure. woman. Yeah, that means yeah, that's good. With you. Good point, good this point. guy's that's not a, a faithful point. guy. If this guy's going behind his wife's back having sex with you, if you think you're going to shack up and this is a good godly man or a man that you want to have a future with, he'll do the same thing to, with you to another woman. He's probably with other women, too. You're not the only woman he's in adultery with. Let me tell Yes. I'm gonna so let me tell off. you how it works. You're going to go reap to what you sow. So if you, so okay, Bye. brother. God bless you. God bless you so brother. if you're reaping out and causing brokenness in a home and a family unit and causing a man to stumble and walk away from his wife, you're going to reap that back in your relationship. Because that's just the way God made, the, made it. You reap out and you sow. You reap out, you sow. So... Just keep that in mind. You may wonder, well, why can't I ever find a man? Why can't I ever be happy? Why can't, why don't, why does every man always leave me? Look at what you're doing and what you're putting out. That's so good. That's such a good word. And we've all been guilty <laughs> of it. Look, I slept, with, I slept with married men. You I slept with married men for There's money. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. It's sowing and reaping. It's in Galatians chapter six. Yes. Reap <laughs> so harvest. Reap so harvest. Is a Just, marriage killer. Yeah, it's an right. adulteress. Yeah. It's a fornicator. Yeah, that's true. So listen, so, here's so, the deal, so. guys. When you see these women on, I won't even say some. Some of them, are whatever. I'll behave my. When you see <laughs> these women on this app dancing and prancing, Herod's daughter did not do the tiptoe through the tulip country one <laughs> tip to through the get tulips. the heart of John the Baptist. <laughs> that's right. Pure seduction that 
grip mm-hmm. women wants to seduce men and the women sometimes have a low self-esteem rejection they don't feel affirmed so they want it they want attention and the devil's using them to seduce and it could come on a man i'm not just isolating but you guys know what i'm talking about bless the lord and man that spirit's running rampant but listen the only spirit they, they, sometimes we used to go in the churches ashton and i used to say to the congregation and the pastor what's the ruling residing spirit over this region or city and some would say abortion murder gangs i'd say the only spirit over this city is the holy spirit and don't ever forget that we got to call those things as they're not as though they so are they are you got to see through the eyes of faith guys god sees things through his eyes we can't interpret through our eyes or our experiences you'll never get free or stay free until you see yourself as god sees you how oh, that's so good you delivered god Amen. sees you not from the beginning to the end but from the end to the beginning he's out for an omega good. and yes. he sees us as the finishing plot that's why he called you not only because you're going to say yes because christ is being formed in you Oh, you better shout this from the rooftops. That's so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a good word. <laughs> that is so good. That is so good. I feel the joy. The joy of the Lord is here today. I'm so pleased that that, that brother came yeah, to me. He came into the right live. He came into the right live. Oh, my goodness. I just felt the anointing on that man. Yeah. Yeah. He came into the right live. Uh, it's the love of God. It's the goodness of God. I want to repeat this. The love of God, the goodness of God leads people to repentance, not condemnation, not coming against people telling them about hell. I don't preach a lot about hell. I talk about hell only when people have a testimony. If people come on here and they say, I saw hell, brother, can I share my experience? I let people talk about hell. If you've seen hell and you want to tell me, tell us your testimony, I'd love to interview you. I think Shelly is in here. You uh, don't have any followers yet. She's got 891. How, wow. about get, how about get your followers to give her a follow and help her out? Yeah. Could, could my followers give Shelly 1231 a follow? That way we can get her up to 1,000. I want to bring her on live and interview her really soon. Uh, this sister in the chat, Shelly, C-H-E-L-L-E, 1231. Yeah, give her a follow. She's right there in the chat. If y'all can give her a follow, we'll, we'll get her up in the box maybe by next week or even sooner than yeah. that. And I had a conversation with her on Facebook Messenger one night until 3 a.m. Between midnight and 3 a.m., I, I couldn't even sleep. This woman has seen angels. She's seen demons. She's very aware of spiritual warfare. She knows what gang stalking is. She knows what targeted individuals are. She's lived through this stuff, through 30 years of this stuff, okay? So she knows all about spiritual warfare. Great woman of God. She died on the table back in 2001, I think, and had an experience where she saw the gates of hell. God showed her these things so she could share her testimony with others amen there's a man that's asked a couple of times to come up in the box he was on my live this morning what's his uh, name you he, want me to bring him up his name, his name is jeremy but butler jeremy butch but Butch butcher okay yeah. want me to bring he, him up he, he came on, yeah he, well, he's got something to say he gave a prophetic word this morning on my live he's a all right man. i'll bring him up i'll bring him up God bless you, brother. God bless you, Jeremy. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, I was in Melissa's uh, live this morning, and I felt drawn to give you all my testimony. Okay, please do. Uh, if, God can, if God can take a three-time prisoner out of prison, and teach the people his word, then I know that he can do, he can take anybody, no matter what they did, no matter where they come from, they can, he, he can use them, because he's been using me. And Hallelujah. like I said, I've been to prison three times. 
Three three times I've been to prison. And I, I, I'm Jonah. I was put. I was put. I was swallowed by a, a whale, which is prison. Prison is, it was my whale, and God spit me out because Amen. He found me. Amen. So. Amen. I want. I want to. I just want to encourage everybody in the life to seek God. Now I've been out four, four years now because my God has been watching over me. Amen. Four years I've been free. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Yes. I've seen. I've seen. I've seen miracles happen. Like I, I was telling this. This Duffin girl that we were talking to this morning, she has stage four cancer. And I told Melissa, I said, I've seen miracles happen. I've seen stage four colon cancer healed. I've seen it with my eyes. Amen. I've seen stage four, uh, what is it? Uh, Cirrhosis to the liver, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, she, this lady lost her hair, everything. She had some type of cancer. But God has healed her from that. Her hair is growing back and everything. And I've seen Amen. it firsthand. I believe. So I know what miracle. Well. Uh, Amen. And I want to I want to talk on, on the tongues tongue still <laughs> if, if y'all don't mind go ahead when when you're speaking in tongues and you're uh, praying in the spirit and when you start talking tongues you can't control your tongue that, that's right that's the spirit using your tongue to speak so when you when you get the gift of gift of uh, talking tongues, you can't control. Them. Try. It. I do. I do feel do feel led so, to share that you can pray in tongues at any time you want. A lot of people don't believe you can pray in tongues. Okay. I can pray in tongues whenever I want. Me too. Yes. There's, there are churches that teach that you can only pray in tongues sometimes, and that, that is a false teaching. No. You, you can so, speak in tongues whenever it comes upon you. That's you, right. Amen. You can, you can speak in tongues at will. We, we have the ability to pray in tongues anytime we want to pray in tongues. People you don't give the Holy Spirit enough it. power. The Bible says, stir up the gift that was given to you, what? By the laying on of hands impartation. The word stir up means to activate, to arouse, mm -hmm. like a finally, like warming up, like a wooden instrument, like an orchestra. You can keep the gift stirred. Paul said, I pray in tongues more than you all. It builds Amen. up my inner man. Unfruitful Jude says, I pray in my most holy faith. So yeah, there, there's as the spirit enables Acts chapter two for us, there's a sign for us, but you can pray in tongues, you can turn it whenever you want, bless the Lord. Yes, you can. You can. Yeah. And it's the perfect will of God. The devil of demons cannot interpret it. Because we That's only right. have so many words in English. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. But when we pray in tongues. We're bringing forth the prophetic will of God in our life. We're birthing it. We're saying, Lord, if oh. this door is not of you, close it or keep it open. If it is your will, the key to the house of David, he shall open doors. No man can shut. Brother, we got to pray for Elise. Come on, brother. I agree. Elise, Elise, Elise. We got to pray. Oh. Now, if she's not oh, from oh. America, we can let her up. You don't need a thousand followers if you're outside of America. Oh, okay. But let's, I'll bring her up. It says I don't. Yeah, she's starting to get the victory, at least. I don't give credence to witchcraft, but I know God's able to deliver. That's I your can't... testimony, at least. That's your testimony. God is able. He's the same yesterday, today. Brother Action, I see it so clear over this woman. 
I'm I trying to invite her. I see, I see genealogy. I see curses, family curses. We got to sever them with the scissor of the Lord, a threefold cord she strand. Don't have to have people, Jesus. Hallelujah. She's in, Amer- she's in America, so she can't come up. Yeah. Yeah, um, but let's pray for her, man. I have a burden for her. God's going to deliver you, Elise. Yes. You're delivered. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we first and foremost pray that any silver cords of witches be cut in the spirit realm. Father, we come against every altar of evil, of witchcraft, of perversion, of lust, of Freemasonry. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over every evil altar in the spirit realm, and we pull it down with the blood of Jesus and with the fire of the Holy Spirit. According to Luke chapter 3, verse 16, John answered their questions by saying, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming soon who is greater than I, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I pray that she, Elise, in the name of Jesus, would receive the baptism of fire of the Holy Spirit today in the name of Jesus. If you're in this chat, Elise, start praying in tongues and just receive the baptism of fire. You're going to become a warrior for God and you will be powerful in the spirit realm. Holy fire in Jesus' name. Just receive. She said she can't breathe, Melissa. She said yeah. she can't breathe like something's choking her. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Melissa. Take those chains and wrap it around that devil, those demons' yes. necks, and drag them. Now do that thing, Melissa. I've heard you do that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go ahead. Let's do it, Melissa. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What's her name again? Elise. 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 Father God, Father God, we just lift up Elise to you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you're do- starting a mighty work in her. Father God, we thank you that you have given your children, the heirs of salvation, all authority on heaven and earth to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt us. Father God, we come in agreement right now, Father God, that witchcraft will not dwell in the presence of the temple of the Lord. We right now release the anointing, the fire of the Holy Spirit to come upon your daughter, Elise, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every serpent, every every serpent under the sound of my voice will be bound in chains of fire in the mighty name of Jesus. We command airways to open up in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak airflow and carbon, di- carbon dioxide intake to be complete and restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, we bind all rebellion. Rebellion is witchcraft. We come against rebellion, all rebellious spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. We command rebellion will go under in the name of Jesus. Every altar in the second heaven, every occultic works that has been performed in this bloodline going back four generations on her mother and father's side, we cover it under the blood by Galatians 3.13 right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak freedom, 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 freedom in her life in Jesus' mighty name. We cut all witchcraft and it curse it to die at its roots in Jesus' mighty name. We speak and we say, be vindicated in the blood of Jesus. Be healed by the stripes of Jesus. All witchcraft, all warlocks. We sever all silver cords to all warlocks and all withers and all witches in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak that all assignments of the enemy is canceled in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All airways will be cleared and clean as we ask for the Holy Spirit to be sent, Father God, through her soul. Heal all soul wounds, all soul wounds and trauma. Any open doors to the enemy, seal them shut with the blood of Jesus Christ. Open up her airway. Any spirits that are blocking her spiritual gifts, may they be cast out. May all evil seeds, venom, roots, and pods of the enemy be plucked out in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we prophesy in the realms of the spirit that Satan, you are on notice, a divine restraining order from the courts of heaven. We ask, Father God, for to be issued towards at least today for her vindication, for her restoration, for her reconciliation to God the Father in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. We thank you, Lord. We Amazing. declare a thing and it will be established. And we declare and decree that who the sun sets free is free indeed. And at least is free in Jesus' mighty name. She is free Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Hey, they just received the gift of tongues in the chat. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Evolved Life just said, I'm currently speaking in tongues for the first time ever, Amen. ever since we prayed. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to give them a follow. 
Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's Jesus. awesome. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, for... Lord, loose her, loose her, loose her. One loose for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the... Loose, loose, loose. To Amen. Elise and be yes. free in Jesus' name. Ha. Come on, Elise. Breathe life the Ruach. Ezekiel says, prophesy to the breath. Someone said the Python spirit in the chat. Thank you for that. That's the... Let me tell you something. God's people are growing. There is an army marching forth. Oh, glory. And it's bigger than you think. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory. come on. How many thank are thankful for General Ashton? General <laughs> Ashton in the oh, army. Oh, glory to God. General. <laughs> General Ashton. <laughs> bless you, Ashton. God bless you and guys. Your wife, Whitney. Your wife, yes. Whitney. 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 Brittany put divine appointments. About 20. Father, we thank you for divine appointments. For Sister Brittany and Brother Ashton. Yes. Divine, yes, divine, divine, divine appointments. Every setback is now a setup. Every setback. Oh, hallelujah. It's a new day for this Ashton and Brittany. Hallelujah. And the Amen. sign will be the car. The wheels yes. will be set in motion. They're going places in motion. Oh, come on. Listen, guys. We, I want this car. We want this car. Yes. Sorry, that was my the, coffee the maker. Cash app. Come on. Let's sew into our brother's vehicle. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Lowercase letters. Ashton. A-S-H-P-O-N. G-S-R-85. Dollar sign. It's on his It's on his little emoji thing on the, on the thumbnail on TikTok. By it is Venmo, on my TikTok. PayPal. It is. Yes. It's on my so TikTok page, on my home page. And so Brittany said, oh, so thank you, soil. Jesus, that he's not going to keep borrowing my car. Yeah. That's what Brittany said. <laughs> Brittany said, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. God bless anybody that sows. I appreciate everybody that helps me out. I, um, I did have a dream last night. I think I told you, Brother Rob, on Facebook. I had a dream last night. I saw the title, a Florida title, and I even saw a dealer plate. <laughs> coming to me. That was interesting. I, I don't really know everything about it. I've actually had several dreams about car titles and things like that. Um, so I would, I would, I would love to just. Yeah, someone said, can we send money to Ashton on this live? Absolutely. Yes. Wonderful. Brittany, if you could put in the comments and, and then brother Shella, I'm sorry, Shelly, I'm sorry, sister, my eyes, the sun, forgive me. I thought it said Charlie. But sister, sister Shelly, yes, the, the cash app is dollar sign A S H T O N G S R. But you can go on his thumbnail, hit the link for the fire of truth, and you'll see. I guess you could do it through PayPal or Zelly or Venmo. Correct, Ashton? Uh, yeah, I do have. I think I do. I do have Venmo. I do have Zelle and all that. The main one I know, I, I know, I know off of memory, off the top of my head, is is Ashton GSR on Cash App. Most people do seem to okay. have Cash App. I will yes. say on this app, it seems like when people give roses and stuff, I don't know how that works, but I think it's only like a, it's like a penny, and then the yeah, app yeah. takes like half the money away from you. So by the time yeah. people sow to you on gifts on here. Yeah. I don't yeah. think you actually recoup hardly any of it, so... That's a, that'll, that'll be a hubcap five years from now. The, five <laughs> years from now, it'll be a hubcap, yeah. So if you're going to sow, just uh, Cash App's probably yeah. the better platform. Thank you, Jelly. Bless Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless Who you guys. Who else wants to sow in the chat? Say, say amen. I'm not putting no pressure. Well, I don't want to risk an offense, guys. I'm not here to risk an offense. I've been doing ministry for decades I've seen this man work a whole lot harder for Jesus in the last month or so since I've known him. I'm not comparing him, but listen, man, I think it's a righteous and honorable thing, and you'll be blessed. You know how I became financially successful? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I came off my honeymoon deck, and I became a radical sower. I sowed $5,000 of my – I didn't even – I was living in my mom's basement of my money from my first marriage. I became, and from there, I started sewing $10,000 checks, 5000 
thousand radically. I became a radical sower to ministries that were bearing fruit. Now, listen, God opened the heaven over my business. I'm an entrepreneur. I never took money from ministry. The Lord said, if you sow, Rob, I'll make your life easy. Amen. If you if you make my life easy and so to me, I'll sow back. I started meeting billionaire clients that started spending a hundred thousand dollars a week religiously with my business for years. These wow. were major. These were wells in the business world. I built bonds, funds. I'm a I'm an entrepreneur. I'm in finance. God bless my life. I can't explain it. I'm, I worked hard. Now, please, guys, come on. I worked hard. I worked half a day, 12 hours a day. I didn't just take a nap and all of a sudden, supernaturally, I shook a money tree. That's it, you know, we don't play that. I worked hard. Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, on the Sabbath, hallelujah. <laughs> so please don't judge me. But, you know, man, when my business was popping, when you own a business, you don't own it. It owns you. You got to work the vision, man. But this guy, this dude's working in ministry, man. He's plowing, plowing, plowing. So into this, man. It's good soil. I'm not getting nothing from doing this. I want to see this car come. It's going to be awesome. Amen. Amen. And when it comes, we can show it to us live. And we can rejoice <laughs> and be blessed with those that are blessed. Because, listen, this man set apart for ministry. This this guy set apart. God has anointed this man. And set, I'm not blowing his head up here. He, If he ever gets, like, full of pride, I'll, I'll beat him up. You know what I'm saying? The choir of New York will beat him up. But he's a hot man. He loves Jesus, man. He Amen. does what he does, not because he has to. He wants to. So hallelujah. There are Amen. people selling. I see it. Someone said Lord. a BMW. Huh? What, what is your PayPal? Someone's um, saying. I don't know that I have one. I think my wife has a PayPal. If she's in the yeah, chat, so I'm going to ask her. So with life, if you go on his thumbnail, you're going to see his cash app. Yeah, I have yes, cash app on my, on my TikTok profile. But yeah. my wife should probably be able to drop paypal if she has it in the chat yeah um if anyone has paypal i don't know what her paypal is offhand to be honest with you i do not know i i tell you what i do, i even believe i do believe in living debt free i would love to have a car or truck with no payment no debt not being indebted to the bank having to make payments i would absolutely love that we the so my wife has a car and we are we have payments right now on that thing and, and so much of our um so much of her income goes to the car payment it just it's 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 amazing when you when you start doing the math on compounding interest how much money we pay in interest over this course yeah. of this automotive loan over five years i'm just like man to if you have cash to pay for things it's so much better to not have to have things financed so yeah yeah, you, uh, look, the PayPal is at Fire of Truth 11. 11 on PayPal. There at Fire of Truth. Now, listen, the number one prayer request to any ministry is not health, infirmity, disease, or sickness. It's financial. It's the truth. Yeah, you can't go anywhere if without you don't money. you have money to pay your bills, it's harder, in a sense, to raise your hands in church on Sunday and worship because the devil wants you weighed down with financial concern some people are sick in their health some people are sick in their pocket i've taught on financial prosperity kingdom economics biblical economics i haven't done it because there's been overkill from the prosperity pimps and they've ruined it so i've weaned i've ruined i've weaned off it but listen sowing and reaping is biblical yep it's biblical. Deuteronomy says he will give you power not to get wealth, but to create it. God wants you blessed so you could be a blessing. And yep. he wants you free financially. And there's nothing wrong with having stuff, guys, as long as this stuff doesn't have you. There's nothing wrong. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. So we, we let's get a rid, of, rid of the religious spirit. Money's not evil or wicked. It's the love. Let's, the, the, it's the gospel needs to be financed. Yep. Bless you, can't, the Lord. you can't go full time into ministry with an empty pocket. It's just a fact. <clears throat> and you know, Ashton, that's why I was never full time because yeah. I was always taught a man can't do two things great because it'll tear because I was working so hard in the natural. Now, I was <clears throat> a youth pastor. I was on radio for years. I'm still on television for 15 years. I've preached. But you, it's, 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 it's impossible. You can't be two places at once, guys. I'm sorry. If you're running a business, you can't be 
in a sense. Now the went the sent one gets the same reward as the went one. If you enable someone to be a missionary and go to Africa or feed the poor, clean drinking water, sex slave trade, you're going to get the same blessing cuz you enable them. I didn't say you went, but you enable them to go financially. And as they're ministering and doing the works of Christ, Paul said it'll go on your account. I'm <laughs> telling you guys, this is biblical. It is. I'm serious. I didn't even come on here and plan to do this. And no, teach and I, just go ahead. Keep but teaching. You're, you're just good. Yeah, I, man. I'm seeing, I had a friend that couldn't pay a $5,000 mortgage on Long Island, New York. It's not cheap here. The real estate, the taxes are insane. This dude's making $20,000 to $30,000 a week profit yeah. as a contractor building all six to eight million dollar homes now. I hate taking like a crazy amount of money. Because now let's let me tell you what he did with the money. Him and his wife, about ten minutes from here, they bought a million dollar two acre piece of property with a house on it, with a barn, and he's turning the barn into a sanctuary for youth and young adults. Because yep. one of the major campuses, which seats about thirty thousand, one of the universities where people come from all over the world in Long Island, is there? It's the backyard of this. So he took the money where he worked hard. And he could have used it to retire, guys. And he's pumping about five hundred thousand into it. But God's blessing him like you. Listen, here's the deal. It's still hot in New York. God will bless your socks off. I have no socks on. It. It's, <laughs> it's barefoot it's hot in the weather. God will bless your socks off. Bless the Lord. Now, yes, you can't I, I do like believe you. in. I believe in tithing. Yeah. I believe in prosperity. I believe in the favor of the Lord. It isn't just what you said. Everything is true. How can you build a ministry out of nothing? How can you build a ministry with no finances? You can't. You need money. You need yeah. money to go anywhere. You need money to travel. You need money to, to propel yourself. And if a pastor or a minister can't, if they're always in lack, then, you know, if you're in poverty, how can you take care of the widow and the orphan? It is. It is the truth. Um, that is the truth. But I, I am believing for supernatural provision, supernatural finances, that the doors and the windows of heaven are just going to be totally open for wherever I go. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory Someone to God. says, I have a home church. Do we tithe to it if they don't go to a church? You know, I'm not going to teach or preach on the tithe. That, would, I believe, was under the Levitical law, but I do believe that Jesus told the boy, he said, go sell all you have and give it. And he went away and wept because he wept because he didn't have the money. The money had him. Just be obedient to the Lord. God will prompt your heart. He'll pull on you. If the Lord says so into someone, 100, 500, 1,000, 20 a month, 10, just be obedient, man, because God will bless your life. You know, any time I sowed, I am telling you, I walked in a radical open heavens. Revelation would just start to pour and download. And that's how I got all these messages all these years on YouTube. God gave me these messages. The Lord instilled and imputed and imparted. I don't listen to any other ministries that much, to be honest. You know, it would come out of the scriptures. So, you know, it is biblical. It's a precious thing, man. I just, I, I, I'm my heart saddened because it's been ruined from some of, you know, but it is awesome, man. I think we got to really restore just the virgin state of giving, sowing, and reaping. It's a precious thing, blessed there's the a, Lord. The there's a big difference, I believe, too, brother. And there's so some people get the, their pro, idea of prosperity wrong because here's what happens: there's there might be five guys in ministry that have a billion dollars or five hundred million, and they own eighteen jets. There, that's so much different than a guy that needs a car that mm. needs to be able to pay his bills and live to do ministry. There's there's so much disparity between someone that has a net worth of almost nothing to someone that's worth five hundred million and still asks for money every time they're on TV or go live. There's such a disparity between the, yeah. the super rich and then someone just saying if you feel that to give. And people, I yeah. feel like people get this bad taste in their mouth because one yeah, percent of the people in ministry that have made it to the top yeah. have yeah. made it's maybe made some bad percent. examples 
Yeah, you know what happened was is they started telling the people, so into my ministry so I can further the kingdom of God on the earth, whether it's buildings, traveling, um, whatever, you know, just so I can live and support my family. And then somewhere along the line, I don't want to blow the whistle and name names, but to suffice that lifestyle they started having to take, I would have to think of very large paycheck. And then, you know, man, it saddens my heart. It's really sad. Guys, so to humble ministries that are really feeding and discipling, keyword teaching, preaching, they're into deliverance ministry. I know of two or three <laughs> of them on TikTok. I've done this for some of the other young men that are a little younger than Brother Ashton because they're they're anointed, man. They're anointed. And if I, I said I tell the people if these people gotta go work eight, ten, twelve hours a day, they're not gonna be able to minister on TikTok to these young people. The people need yeah. ministry, guys. They don't need preaching. They don't need so much knowledge, debating, refuting, evolution. It's terrible. I can't even take it. If Too much someone, theology. If someone Too much. debates one more time on the Trinity versus oneness, I, I think I'm going to lose my patience and want to backslide and punch someone in the head. What is going on with this? It's like the craziest stuff, man. They're debating. It's terrible. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's a mystery. The Trinity is a mystery, guys. It's a Trinity. But, you know, hey, praise the Lord. God's praise all Lord. doing great, 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 great work. And, brother, we rejoice with you. We bless you. Praise Someone God. said, I give my church to my church on, Monday, on Sundays. That's great, man. Support Amen. your local church. We're not telling you to not do that, guys. Yeah. I believe in the vehicle of the institution of the local church, the fivefold ministry. If they're doing this stuff, equipping the saints for the work of the ministry, hey, bless the Lord, man. One of my pastor friends built the largest church on the islands of 2,500 members, which there's not that many large churches here in Long Island. And he lived very moderate very moderate and he always has for 40 years because the area he's in is very challenged and the school he has goes in debt every year but where the church is it's a it's a very very rough area gang activity violence a lot of terrible so he opens the school up they can't pay it so we honor people like that bless the lord we honor men and women like that that are plowed that have really worked Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I agree, Brother Rob. I my my heart, let me tell you where my heart is prepared to go, I believe, is to train up and equip other people that are supposed to be in leadership. Young people, people that are 18, people that are 20. I agree with you, Rob. I have a heart for these kids, these 19, 18 year old kids, 20 year old kids on TikTok that are preaching from the fire, people that are baptized in the fire people that are preparing to go into ministry, preparing to go into preaching and evangelizing to the nations, people that are teaching and preaching on deliverance ministry, people that are operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, people that are having miracles, signs and wonders following their ministries. These are the people that God is raising up to go into this next, this, I'm talking about even I am being trained up to equip the other, the next generation that's coming. It's always about <laughs> sowing back into that next generation. If there's a, di yeah. I think you touched on this yesterday, brother Rob. If if I don't witness to the youth, the guys that are 19 and 20 and one, 21 years old, these are the guys I'm focused on because they need someone that they're going to listen to. And I know they listen to me. I know a lot of them, they, they're very receptive to what I have to say by the grace of God, glory to God. They do tune in and they'll listen. And I do believe God is leading more young guys and women that are called to go into ministry one of the things, though, that I feel so strongly on is a lot of people do tend to lean on the church and they don't get into the Bible for themselves. So then they kind of they stumble when the devil comes to their door. This is why we see so many people today struggling in spiritual warfare, because the, in the last five, 10 years, there's not every church has taught on deliverance and spiritual warfare and truly becoming a disciple of Christ. Now, a lot of churches make great converts. Come to this church, we'll pray for you. Come to this church, repeat this prayer. We'll give you a sermon once a week. But to be a disciple, that's every day. That's not once a week on Sunday. A disciple lives for Christ every day. 
A disciple is a sent one. Wherever he goes, the Lord is working through that person to take down the lies of the devil, to reach the lost and afflicted, to feed the widow and the orphan, whether it's a spiritual meal or an actual physical one here on the earth, they're going to get fed in some type of way. This is my heart. This is my calling. And I know this is the gifting in the area I operate in. And I believe Brother Rob Wood and Melissa, the same is true for you. We're called to train up and equip leaders in the next generation. So we're not the only ones that know how to do ministry. My entire goal is to teach you everything I know, preach my heart out every time I go live. So if you run into a situation out here in the street or in real life, you don't need to come reach out to me to figure out what to do. I want you to know how to do everything I know how to do. Basically, Jesus came to replicate himself in his disciples. He didn't come to control everything. Jesus wasn't saying, you can only learn from me, uh, but you know, you'll know you never be like me. No, no, no. Jesus never was about power and control. Jesus was giving power to the disciples, control. He put it back, the power back on the people so that he said, you can walk in this power. You have the authority to cast out demons, to tread on serpents and scorpions. You don't need to rely on someone else to teach you when you have the comforter living inside of you. Come on, somebody. When you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have the promise. You've been sealed. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. You have the Holy Spirit in you. He is the teacher of all truth and wisdom. The comforter has come at the day of Pentecost. What you need is to be baptized in the fire of God. There's a double portion anointing available to those that are hungry. You can pray right now and receive the fire of God. The baptism of fire, it's mentioned in Luke chapter 3, verse 16. If you're curious, when you're baptized in the fire, you're going to wake up hungry for God. You're going to go bed, go to bed hungry for God. You're going to wake up thanking God. You're going to go to bed thanking God. The devils will tremble because wherever you go, you're carrying his glory. You're carrying the presence of the Lord within you because you've poured it all out and you've died to self. And now the Lord has anointed you with the fire to go out and do ministry. That's what you need is the fire. (laughs) You need the anointing. You need the anointing. The anointing breaks the chains. It's the anointing that you need. Glory. Let's let's commission evangelists. The Bible says Jesus breathe on them. And he commissioned them. Someone said, I want to preach and evangelize, but it's traveling. I'm struggling with. Listen, all believers are evangelists. Yes. All believers Mm, are called to spread the great commission. Go ye into all the world. It's Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts, Jerusalem. Start with your neighbors. Start at the coffee shops, the ball fields. It's so simple. Do you know God has a plan for your life? People say, I didn't know that. Yes, he does. He loves you. And the greatest plan he has is he desires to have, hear me, a relationship with you and then minister the gospel. What's the gospel? Man cannot outdo what God's done. Man morally cannot earn salvation or atonement of sin. It's by grace and the blood. Just give him the gospel. Learn how to articulate the gospel. Like a salesman. Hear me, I've been doing this for years. There's signs and wonders evangelism, power evangelism, prophetic evangelism, and friendship evangelism. The number one way people come to Jesus is friendship evangelism. Let me teach you about prophetic evangelism. I walked in a diner with my friend. The waitress came. When she left, I told my friend, the Holy Spirit just told me that woman's son's nickname. He says, come on, Rob. You can't. I says, watch this. The Holy Spirit just told me the waitress's son, the woman comes to the table. I said, your son's name, nickname, not name, is Mikey Jr. You don't call wow. him Mike, Michael. Glory. You, I do know that. She says, what are you, a tarot cards or a witch? Or, a, you know, a, a palm? I says, no, I'm a Christian minister. When she Lord. walked away, the Lord said she is in an adulterous affair with her husband's best friend. 
I says, mm. how am I going to do this? I, she comes back. I says, what's going on, ma'am? She says, I'm getting divorced. I said, why? She says, I'm in an affair with my husband. I says, for the sake of your son, Mikey Jr. See, I put the kid in there. That little picture of her kid. You need to save this marriage and yeah. repent. She says, my God, I'm going to church tomorrow. This is unbelievable. With the testimony, with the Lord supernaturally. That's so powerful. It's incredible. And when it happens, it builds your faith. I'll give you one more story. This is going to blow your mind. Ashton heard part of it. I put it on the reels on Facebook. I'm at the gym. This woman starts cursing out these boys, screaming, F-bombing them. Now she comes over to me. I'm minding my business, lifting light. She says, you blankety blank, you're one of them too. I says, ma'am, I don't know you, but Jesus Christ loves you. He's got a plan for your life. Ah, blankety blank, Jesus, I know God. You. She comes back to me a couple of minutes late. I wanted to apologize to you. She's, I said, you don't need to. God loves you. He's got a plan. She comes back to me, guys, a few days later. She says, I really want to re-apologize. Now, the next day, the manager said those young punks were disrespecting that woman. She's a little older. She's in her mid-60s. Hear this testimony. It's going to blow your mind. They wouldn't take the 50-pound plates off the leg press, and she can't do it. So she lost the temper. She comes back to me. She said, I wanted to re-apologize. Look at this testimony. Don't scroll. It's going to blow your mind. I said, you don't need to. And I give her the gospel. She starts crying in the gym and accepts Jesus as Savior. Amen. She says, I didn't know this. Amen. I could be born again. She says, Rob, my daughter is a heroin addict. I have not seen my daughter in 10 years. Ashton, are you listening to this? I'm listening. She I'm says, making coffee. I have I'm, not I'm seen my daughter in 10 years. She's a heroin addict. I prayed, Father God, in Jesus' name, let this woman be united with a daughter soon. And then me and my wife played in the kitchen. She comes back a week later screaming in the gym. I seen my daughter. I seen my daughter. I says, what you say? I said, you told me you haven't seen your daughter in 10 years. She says, she says, I was driving through the streets of Queens going into Manhattan. This is Manhattan. This is not Wyoming with a few cows and a few farmers. There are tens of... She says, as I'm driving the car, Rob, my daughter's walking in the street wow. right next to my car. I says, what'd you say to me? She says, I haven't seen my daughter in 10 years. I'm driving in the streets, thousands of cars. As I'm walking, my daughter's in the street. I got out and hugged my daughter, and I've been reconciled with her. I've been having lunch with her, and she's in a rehab now. Wow. I said, this is blowing my mind. The wow, woman's driving awesome. in the street. Now, the Queens, from where me and this woman live, is 40 miles. This is not like she's around the corner from a I said, this is, this is crazy, man. This wow. is blowing my mind what God can do. It's incredible. Jesus. That's Hallelujah. Amazing. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, can I say Hallelujah. something on that? I want to say something yeah, on that. My, my pastor told me, he tells us that uh, it doesn't matter how you start. It's how you finish. Amen. Come on, brother. Okay, and he also tells us that it's okay. It's okay not to be okay, but it's not good to stay not okay. So, with all that you said, hey, it don't matter how you start; it's how we finish, and that's what God wants us to do: is finish, finish the race. That's awesome, brother. Mm. That's it, brother. The race is not to the swift, but to the shore. Paul said you have need of endurance. This is not a sprint, Christianity. It's a marathon. He said, what? I finished my race. Someone put, he who endures to the end, shall you have need of endurance. Come on, guys. God is breathing life and power and anointing and death. You're going to finish strong. The devil lies to people. He tells them you're not going to make it. You're not going to finish this race. I'm going to take you. Listen to me right now. God's going to pick you up. He's been carrying you. Hallelujah. 
David said yes. my foot almost slipped. I would have fainted unless I seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Someone out there, you feel like you're fainting. Do not become weary in doing well. You will reap a harvest yes. in due season if you faint. You're going to make it. God's with you. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yep. Amen. That's such a good word. We carry one another in a way when we encourage <laughs> each other in the faith. You know, I've learned this, that we are all linked together in the body of Christ. It's not like any one of us can really function without the others. So if you're what my brother just said is so true. If you're in the chat and you're like thinking about giving up or you feel like you can't make it another day, it's not a coincidence that you're on this live. God is not the author of confusion. So, you know, the devil fights us in different ways. Sometimes it's delay. Sometimes it's hesitation. Sometimes people feel like they've become despondent where they almost feel like giving up. And, you know, your breakthrough and promotion could just be on the other side of whatever it is you're going through right now. Think it not odd that you've got fiery trials in this life. If you're encountering demonic opposition in your life, just know that that means you've been called. You're sent. You're anointed. A lot of people are waiting for a leader to stand up, but that leader is you. I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I, 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 lost, I lost two people now. I'll bring you back up. Right. Where did Melissa go? You, God bless you. What would you say? I said I'm still here with you, brother. Yeah. I don't know what happened to Melissa and Rob. They just dropped off. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, give you me one second. You keep doing guys. what you're doing, brother. What's that? I said you keep doing what you're doing, brother. Amen. You're, Amen. you're getting to a lot of people. I'm just making some coffee right now. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely, uh, I, I like to teach my heart out. I like to teach people everything I know so that I'm not, here's what happens, you guys. A lot of ministries don't teach you the gap, how to bridge the gap. What I'm talking about is there's a lot of ministries, big churches that get built up around a celebrity personality. And if they don't teach you, the people in the audience, the people in the church, if they're not teaching you how to do what they do, then they're leaving something out quite possibly. And it's leaving you in a place of lack. You've got to know how to do ministry and be equipped to do evangelism, deliverance, cast out demons, how to pray for the sick, how to walk in the power and demonstration of the gospel, which is signs, wonders, and miracles. When you step out in faith, God will confirm your ministry, your calling, and your election. I'm actually starting to quote Ephesians chapter 4. I'll probably read that next. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Everybody has a testimony. Your testimony is not a testimony unless there's a test. So if you're going through something... If you're going through some type of trial, you're not alone. God is with you. God has not abandoned you. You're not an orphan. You're not rejected. You're not confused. I speak life over you all in Jesus' name today. Let me see if I can get my sound working again. Hallelujah. Um, let's see. Uh, testing. Let's see. Testing. 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 I hear you. Testing. For some reason, I can't get my... Um, for some reason, my microphone is not working. Testing, testing, testing. My my feedback's not working on my audio. I'm trying to get my headset on. Um, let's see. I don't know why I can't have. I don't have any audio feedback. 
Testing, testing, testing. My headset's not working. I like to use my headset. Give me one second, guys. I'm going to drop down and I'm going to come right back up. One second. I'm going to drop the live and I'm going to relaunch my live. My headset will not link. I'm going to have to close this app and start over again. I, I made the mistake of disconnecting my mic. One second. I'll be right back. <laughs> 